<laughs> oh no. Uh, qu- quatre? Trois. De. Un. Yay! <laughs> hey! Oui! A Louis! A Louis! <laughs> Bien! Okay. Bien! <laughs> now we're going to do okay. the rest of the show in French. No. No, no, no. no. Uh, quelquefois. No. Uh, quelquefois. Uh, Encore know. a fois. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the DMs Book Club, a podcast where we read about some Dungeons and & Dragons and how and how we might implement it in our role-playing campaigns. Uh, as it always is now, now improvise. Hello again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, now improvise. <laughs> now improvise. Um, yeah, my name is now improvise. Um, with me, as always, for our weekly episodes on Dragon's Jewel is my wonderful co-host, Hamilton. Hamilton, how are you, my friend? Hi. Yes, I am good. How are you? I am good. I know we always start like, how are you? How are you? And we always say the British like, I'm good. good. Yeah. Even though we spent 45 minutes discussing <laughs> oh, how shit, good we were on <laughs> <laughs> podcast. I mean, no one needs to hear that. So that's all good. That's all good. I feel, feel generally I'm okay. In the sort of on that level I'm okay. There's mm-hmm. you know, there's ups and downs within that, but I'm on a level okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, it. that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah. Well, we have a very interesting topic to talk about this week, uh, which you it suggested, and I hadn't realised how close this was to launching again. So do you want to introduce the topic we've got today, Hamilton? Well, yeah, it says it. It says, for the people listening, they don't know this yet, but they might no. because it comes up on the podcast thing, but it is oh. the Critical Role Campaign Special. Ooh. And why are we doing it today? Well, because on Twitch, if you're watching this live on Twitch, you will know that in about... Uh, it's three hours time, Critical oh, Role really? Campaign 3 will be starting. So, yes. you know, by the way, if you've come along, why don't you just enjoy? We'll talk about what happened and all these campaign guys they talk about, ready for you mm-hmm. to have a bit of tea and then watch the Campaign 3. Or, like, if you're going to be like us, go to bed and go then to... catch you up on next week. Yeah. When you <laughs> listen, comes or on YouTube. listen to this podcast <laughs> mm-hmm. and then go and listen to the podcast because it's out a week later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. absolutely. So yeah. I guess we'll, we'll start with the most important thing. Hamilton, mm-hmm. what is Critical Role? I have been oh. living under a rock for the last five years <laughs> and I, I'm still into D&D. What is Critical Role? What is Critical Okay, if you don't know, Critical Role is an actual play uh, live stream now and as well podcast. I think it's as popular mm-hmm. on either. It's the most popular Twitch channel, the most profitable Twitch channel we've found out as recently. As we found recently, yeah. We just found out recently, but not surprisingly, <laughs> because it's a very well put together campaign. Uh, firstly, part of Geek and Sundry uh, when mm-hmm. they started, it was a home campaign run by Matthew Mercer, who is the DM, with some fantastic uh, voice actor talent as he is himself as the mm-hmm. character players. Uh, if you don't know them, I will. I could say all their names, but I don't want to waste too much time. No, and... but it, but what's interesting is that yeah. you will have definitely heard all of the, the players, oh, yeah. and so they're all friends and stuff, but they've mm. all been in video games you have played. Yes. So the, 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 I think the most prolific one, and the, I'm sure people won't mind me yeah. saying this, is Laura Bailey, who is yes. in bloody Every everything. Every video game. Every video game. And once yeah. you've watched a couple of episodes or a, a season or two of Critical mm. Role, and you, then you start playing video games, you're like, bloody hell, yeah. they've Hi, been Laura. here all this time. <laughs> and, Hello, and Laura. you actually hear Marisha quite a lot as well, I've noticed. Marisha, and... uh, Liam as well, yeah, uh, Liam O'Brien. Well, Liam, we all know more from... Uh, I've watched Naruto, but I watch Naruto mm. in Japanese because... <gasps> I want with the subtitles because mm-hmm. I look, I know some Japanese, so I like to pretend I'm learning more Aww. Japanese by watching it. So, but I do know he does Gara from the Naruto mm-hmm. from there, and then um, Travis Willingham, you'll know from um, if you've played Batman the Telltale series. Yep, along plays. with Laura Bailey as well. But, along with Bailey as well, exactly. Well, she's in everything, as we said. But then she's Travis, in everything. So it, it, just, assume, <laughs> just assume Laura is in everything with these things as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then uh, Sam Regal, who's famous more on the, well, really on the advertising and the theatre, because he was part of Hamilton mm-hmm. uh, on the stage, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. my namesake. And yeah. uh, and then uh, uh, last, Ashley Johnson. And then last but not well. least, my point, Ashley Johnson, you will know from being saved by Captain America in the first mm-hmm. Avengers. Uh, and uh, The Last of Us as well, yeah. as um, Ellie in The Last of Us, which is, yes. if you've, again, not, again, a side recommendation, play The Last of Us and oh play The Last of Us Part 2. Oh my two, gosh, yes. And then cry. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I could talk about that 
for another four hours. That, that we'll have to, we'll have to, yeah, we'll yeah. have to talk about that on a separate podcast for this. But yeah, so essentially, all these friends obviously mm. knew each other through the industry, and just got going on. I think I believe it was um, a birthday present to Liam uh, that they just wait. Let's play a game of, of yeah. Pathfinder. And then it just went from there, and all these other people came in, and then they had a team of uh, eight, nine at the beginning, I think, and then it gone down to eight and seven, yeah. and they just for the last five years mm-hmm. played D and D in front yeah. of for in front Hundred, of thousands. I mean, of yeah, because I mean, they started on Geek's Hundred, which I mean is beneficial. And it, but it, I remember watching when I first watched the first campaign, it rose so dramatically. Mm-hmm. It was like. By episode 30, it's like trying to get to 10,000 followers. And then the next minute, it was just like numbers and numbers were just incredible. And um, Mm -hmm. it was a bit of a, it was literally, I don't know, it hit the zeitgeist, didn't it? The right time Mm -hmm. of just when everyone was starting to, just D&D was becoming part of the world again. And, um, and, and, but I, that I don't want to say takes away from anything from it because it is so well put together. And Matt Mercer is, is just a great storyteller and they are all amazing actors and so yeah. it's not surprising it was a special source at the right time sort of thing yeah i think what's really interesting about critical role is that i i remember when it first came out it was like first 20 episodes in and as you say it had its popularity stuff, but it was just at the time we hadn't really seen mm. D or any streamed games of any rpgs i would say to that level of just like even yeah. like geek and Sundry, just just streaming live and it was like two hours or whatever, and then like an hour and a half for like Q and A's and and mm. promoting stuff. And then since then, I think Twitch got bigger, YouTube yeah. got better. You know, all, like you said, all these sort of networks sort of exploded because it was like we can really easily stream live on the internet. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it was just and and I think it definitely with help with that, it obviously inspired loads of other streams. So obviously High Rollers, uh, mm. the sort of UK equivalent, I would I would say. Although there's obviously, and, and I, I appreciate we, we would have to do this sort of disclaimer. Critical Role is great. That's how I certainly got into D&D. I'm sure that's how you have been influenced as well, Hamilton. But obviously, it's not everyone's cup of tea. There yeah. are billions of other streams out there. Obviously, we both own our own sort of podcasts that do actual plays of different RPGs and stuff. So this might not be for you. But I think we have to acknowledge that without Critical Role, I don't think D&D or even RPGs have been, been run live on Twitch would mm. have the same, um, the same, same effect as it does yeah. now. 100%. I think it's, it. Uh, yeah, as I said, it was one of the, the cr- critical uh, parts of, of the puzzle. Like, as I said, the other one is sort of Stranger Things. I always mention, you know, mm-hmm. they play, them playing D&D and that. Then, um, oh, I'm trying to think, I can't think of the others off the top of my head. But at the same time where it just started to just kick off and, and mm-hmm. they were there and doing it really well. Mm-hmm. And as you said, all the other sort of... Um, it's pieces of the puzzle like streaming to Twitch becoming so popular, internet becoming more available for everyone to do that as well. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, that it's. Yeah. It's and I, I also, it also helps in a way of once you see some high profile people who maybe you don't see on camera. Again, mm. these are all mostly vo- voice actors apart from Ashley Johnson, who does have a quite um, prolific yeah. TV career and film career now. Then. Then they're like, hey, we're going to invite our friends on who also enjoy D&D. And then you suddenly hear stuff like yeah. uh, Vin Diesel is massively into D&D. Yes. And you're like, Vin Diesel? Yes, <laughs> and, exactly. And, and, you hear, and then you hear like bands who go on tour and then they have their own D&D sessions after the yeah. show and stuff like that. And you're thinking, like, it's, it's, it's that sort of turning yeah. point where D&D became cool again. And I, again, quotation yeah. marks there. But it's like, these famous people are very happily saying, oh yeah, I like playing a wizard in my yeah. off time. Yeah. And you think, but you're so bloody cool. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I think that's the thing. I think suddenly realizing that these people are well-rounded. They like good storytelling. Mm. They like immersive experiences and having fun with their friends. It just was just a huge human side to it. And I think that's again another factor into that popularity. So hundred yeah. percent. You didn't have to say. I mean, it's still, there's some people have to go. I, I, I play D and D. You know, what do you? What's your podcast so, about? It's about D and D, and like you do that sort of face. What, what but, does RPG mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Does, yeah. It, does it mean a grenade launcher? Yeah, exactly. Like, no. <laughs> It's very we true. Ju- we just we just throw story bombs. At yes, each other. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it became much more like, yeah, I'm playing D and D. Oh, I said, why? And I, you know, it's be- and it's just in parlance, and you just feel mm-hmm. it's great. I mean, it's great, and the whole and the whole Twitter and everything like that has also just helped that community be built, and you feel like you can connect with all these other great people that yeah that also love what this crazy little game. Yeah, and, and yeah, um, you have to shout out to the. And to the and I'm gonna say critter community. Mm. I will say I I hate the word critter. <laughs> it's a, 
I, it's like the same reason I don't really like Trekkie, even though I am a big fan of Star Trek. Yeah. So I just, there's just something about it. I'm just like, it feels very demeaning and debasing to me, but some people really embrace it. So again, yeah. it's each to their own fun, but the critic community is, is very loving. And I must say the artwork that people put out there is incredible. And yeah. like, I, like I know when that campaign two was sort of wrapping up, I had to like, because I, I wasn't caught up to date, I had to like put spoiler tags on all my Twitter feeds because obviously these beautiful art will come up and yes. it's like spoilers for this episode. And you're like, it's beautiful, but damn you, story. <laughs> like... Yes, exactly. I know. You just like I got it. Yeah, you just had. Well, that was the problem being a podcast person. I mean, I did watch the the last one a bit as mm. as a bit live, but then it was too late. And then mm-hmm. in the nights it went on for hours. But um, yeah, I yes. that week afterwards, I was like just don't look at anything just can't look at the internet you know it's just yeah. because it's all there but yeah and that's and that's the other thing to note as well just before we move on is that critical role again because it's a storytelling thing it is weekly there are four to five hour episodes i think one of the previous uh episodes in the second series was nearly seven and a half hours long because they pre-recorded it mm. I don't i think the other thing is to say like obviously if you love a show and you want to catch up and stuff like that, then that's that's your whole life. But the, I do go on to emphasize there are so many other shows out there, and I've got a few recommendations yeah. after we finish this thing. But like, oh yes, yeah. there, I think the, the the interesting about Critical Role is that having been having been there since from the beginning, not at all, but having watched quite mm. a, along the way, that's been very helpful. But I can imagine you're coming up to season three now. You're, oh, maybe I should watch season one and two. There's like over 200 yeah. episodes, yeah. and most of them are four to five hours long. And certainly the early yeah. ones aren't as good quality or high quality because it's obviously back in the mm. days when they were just sorting out streaming. Don't panic. That's the answer. I mean, obviously there's Wikipedia guys. So we they do They've recaps done really good as well. Recaps, yeah. And yeah, I, with Danny I Carr. Think, yeah. If I was going to say like, if you want to get really into it and you think I want to watch all of Cam, I want to watch all of it. I would even suggest like, unless you are super dedicated and you've got the time and you want to do it, I would say skip everything until episode till they get out of the underdark in the yes. first the first season i would just say look because that was halfway through a, a sort of storyline it yeah. was a nice way to introduce characters but and it was a great final battle but mm-hmm. i could say look you could just get the catch up to that first arc start at the second arc when they go on the briarwoods arc oh. basically oh. and and just dive straight in there and then if you want to come back and do that first bit again because you want to later do it but i started re listening to season one and i did do it from the beginning and i went through the whole crag hammer bit but when i got to the bright i was like yeah okay and here I, we go yeah, here we go I, yeah we'll quickly put spoilers on it just in case but <laughs> yeah. i will i will say that Briarwood arc, so I think that's like from episode 20 onwards, and yeah. I will actually come to it, I think because you are going to suggest doing uh, a Heroes Chronicle and probably the prophecy stuff as well yeah. that is in the second book. Yeah. The idea of being able to tie a player's backstory so beautifully in a campaign, mm. and so yeah, Percy de Rolo's arc yeah. in that that Briarwood uh, arc, it's at the time, and I was so yeah. tense. Because yeah. I'd never yeah. seen anything like that, and I'd, 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 when you watch it back and you see like a little drop of a name here and you're like that's in that person's backstory and they've noticed yeah. it and and you just see the faces go yeah <gasps> i mean we didn't even mention talisa 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 jaffe at the beginning i mean pff, i mean a named very after, underrated a race underrated player i think absolutely. he is pff, i don't know sometimes i felt through particularly as actually all the characters he's played but um percy and um caduceus but uh, i thought were his mm. best of them i think molly was great but i think he hadn't got enough time to get into it but no percy was just some of those some of the, the soliloquies he even had as him was just incredible and like yeah. the, uh, the energy in that whole arc was mm. you i mean that's the thing you that <laughs> i play D. <D&D. laughs> i don't play that D. like i just i just i i accept that that it would take a, a lot for me mm. to even scratch at that surface. I don't know. I'd love to think I could try, but I don't think oh. I could. You know, I like I think, to think I could, but I don't think absolutely. I, could. I think like yeah, it, it is a testament, and yeah, no shame on any of the players because obviously they are amazing voice actors. Yeah. But I think oh, yeah. the stark difference between Talos and Jaffe's characters, and even in the one shots as well, mm. um, which they've done a few of, which I again can highly recommend if you're just interested in a little like to taste of what the different mm. styles are. They are so different, but so well thought out and clever. Yeah. And I just think, like, out of all of them, Talison is the quieter one, 
but is one to watch. So yeah, I, I completely oh, yeah. agree. I think I think I do I do have a soft spot for Sam Regal because he I always mean, makes me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> but like no, it's I'm... Sam Regal, so I can't he can't be that. <laughs> well, no, but like I see this is the thing. Like when I've done this conversation with people, and I said, "Who's your favorite?" Like I'd be like. I'd start saying one and they go, but, 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 and then I'd say the other one and they go, but, 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 and then I go, and then by the time I've just gone through everyone, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I, I think Keyless was one of my favorite characters. I thought the, the, the mm. way that, um, the uh, era and stuff, the yeah. growth of that character, the way that Marisha played the sort of growth. Mm. I mean, we're just turning this into a <laughs> critical role. No, but, but yeah, we, we will get onto it, but essentially yeah. too long. I it's think it is good. one of, it's, it's, it's very good in the sense of like, if you want to see storytelling and something that affects uh, affects players, and yeah. like it's something that you go, I want to come back next week. And I, I you know, mm. even from that first sort of mini arc where they mm. get the crag hammer and stuff, that even that first episode, mm. everyone has their personality. It's all sort of set up, so it is it is mm. something interesting. And, and the same with the second series as well, which is it takes place on a completely different continent and a different mm. uh, different timeline, different different things. Yeah. With that in mind, yes. well, let's talk about... <laughs> let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. So we are sort of taking bits and pieces from two different books, and I have them here. So the first one is Taldori Campaign Setting, which is the yep, first one I'm that came out. Transition, so Ooh. you can see a front cover picture. Look at that. <gasps> it's, yeah, amazing. So this is by uh, Green Ronin, uh, Pe- 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 Green Ronin Publishing. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, and I'm sure you knew this, um, so it's written obviously by Matthew Mercer, but mm. we've also another person called James Hake, Yes. Rhymes with Cake, who is, or who was, sorry, one of the lead writers on D&D Beyond. He wrote some of the Encounters of the Weeks and sort of set that up. Yes, that's right. Yes, mm. I did. He's, yeah, he's, I've seen his name on there in places. That's, yeah. Mm. So, so it's a really good writing. And then obviously the other one, which people may be more aware of, or uh, more, not more famous, sorry, but more uh, intrigued of, is Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, which is on, which was published by Wizards of the Coast fairly mm. recently. Um, and yes, yeah, so... I guess Hamilton, like w- mm. with both of these books, like, yeah. what would you say are the the obvious main difference with them, apart from different titles, obviously? <laughs> I, well, the the I think well, actually I don't know. I felt they were pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Personally, I thought they mm-hmm. were they had a very similar format. Um, you know, the, the chapters were pretty much similarly labeled. There are what they all come with is sort of you know deep lore beginning. Mm-hmm. Deep lore beginning, and then uh, a middle bit of lots of class options and character options and additional monsters and all that sort of stuff, as well as the mind and magic of Matthew Mercer giving you something to add to that beyond what you get from your, your average D and D. So he gives you options for your normal D and D, and then each of them has something that's a little tidbit extra. So mm-hmm. you know, like the Taldori one has the sort of the the campaign rules and the uh, the vestiges as well on top of, mm-hmm. and then the Wild Mount has this heroic uh, backstory. Oh, and also the resurrection as well as in Taldori. So there's sort of oh, little I bits see. that they've created, homebrew rules that mm-hmm. I think would be the benefit. So that's I, I think they're the same. What do you think? Do you think they're the same? Uh, <laughs> similar? similar? They are. I think the more obvious thing was that they're about two different continents. <laughs> that's oh, what sorry. I was going yes. to think. No, yeah. no, no. But it's very yeah. important. I think this is very important. So when you look at them, yeah. a lot of people might go oh my god, campaign settings, hooray, but also, oh my god, there's a lot of lore. Uh, yes. But you're right, I think a lot of the lore is duplicated. Essentially, mm. with, with this, this so the whole world is called mm. Exandria, and they have uh, lots of different continents. So the first continent, which Series 1 takes place in, is Taldore, which is a beautiful, sort of like, a, if you imagine, almost like a... Uh, a picture. Oh, talk, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, if you show a picture. Um, I'm just trying to make, like a... Yeah. What's the, the, you know, because we were doing French before counting yes. in the fleur, fleur, de, some, fleur, yeah, de, fleur de lis. It's a little yes. bit like the fleur de lis. It's like a fleur de lis. I think it's right at the back, isn't it? It's going to be. It's right going to be right at, the back. right at the back, and annoyingly, I think it's going to be right at the back. Um, we'll I will say the physical copies come with amazing maps, and I'm always a big fan of maps. I'm, at some point, I'm going to be. I'm going to take it out. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah, so it's yes. sort of spread out a little bit, and uh, for me, uh, again. And I will say this, uh, it's been a long time since I've listened to Critical Role Season mm. 1. Um, but obviously you've got sort of Imon, which is sort of the main capital mm. city. You've got Whitestone, which we've sort of talked about briefly. That's sort of the main area where the Briarwoods is yep. in. And you've got all uh, Craghammer's up yeah. to the, the left. Yeah, yeah Craghammer here. Um, yeah, Imon's down there. I did. Yeah, yeah Imon, yeah, uh, yeah. It's up yeah. there. You go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and 
all all of this stuff is again they talk the way they travel across and all sorts of things. So it's all very different. So this is all mm -hmm. sort of one continent takes place in, whereas in uh, in Explorers Guide Wide to Get no, Explorers Wide. Explorer's well, Guide, guide to Wild, to wild Lands. Lands. <laughs> I hope you there. Wow. Look, um, this is a separate continent, and, yeah. and you can see actually, you can see on this map as well. That is the edge on the left-hand side. That is the ed edge of Tal'Dorei. So Tal'Dorei is yeah. off to the left, and it pretty uh, much wild touches because they even talk in campaign one. There's the whole arc of the Briarwood starts with them talking about building a bridge between yes. the two. Uh, yeah. Just, there's a little bit of Lord, dumb yeah, and I think I think they've they've they it's been sundered like it was being completed and was sundered, mm. which reminds me of like um uh, there's a oh, there's a train line in uh, the in Fife in Scotland where I got similar sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, so what's different about Wild Mount, which I think unless you, I mean, again, I say this, I I kind of lost this a little bit in season two, I will say, but mm. the main sort of themes about Wild Mount is that war is happening. Mm. Uh, there's two sort of uh, empires. Uh, the Dwalin Empire and the Kree Dynasty almost sort of uh, together mm. and it's been almost like a cold war for ages and each of them had their own ideals and stuff and then now when the book has come out it's full-blown war and what I mm. found really interesting maybe compared to the Tal'Dorei campaign is like okay this is definitely a big theme of Wildmount you know you, yeah. there are guards there are you know skirmishes and stuff like that how much of this do you want in your campaign do you want war to be a big thing so it's right at the front is it something mm. in the background or not at all and it said it's kind of important to mention this because actions are what your players do and what happens in the second campaign because it says like uh, up to episode 50 is when it's canon uh, and then after that, mm. it goes off into its own thing. So obviously, anything you do is obviously canon in your own world and stuff. But it's just saying, like, you can influence the outcome of a war, mm. depending on how you're doing it. And then it went on to saying, like, OK, so if your players really want to have this war element at the front of the campaigns, once you've spoken, them, spoken to them about it, the issue is, if you join the army, there's lots of orders and nobody likes taking orders. So it, it, it talked <laughs> about... Definitely not player characters. <laughs> no, exactly. But it talked about how do you make it so yeah. that war is a part of it and it's mm. it and it's interesting to the players and you're not being bossed around and you're not being railroaded yeah. and stuff. And it gave the really cool example of being in a siege if you're under attack. So in my head, I was thinking like Helm's Deep, you have to survive. And I was sort of talking to you about it, this idea that instead of having just a huge battle of loads of things happening, it is like encounter after encounter, almost like a, a dungeon crawl. Mm. So you are here, people are, are streaming in from a broken wall on the right, but you can also see the big boss leader of this particular mm. wave is going off t towards where the uh, people are hiding in the cellars. Which one do you deal with? And then using that to sort of break it down completely so that they feel like they're in the moment, but they're not being overwhelmed by giant forces per se, and just take it like that. And I thought that was a really cool idea yeah. of, of dealing with war and dealing with battles like that i feel that reminds me when you said that and i didn't say it at the time was the it's like um old-fashioned um games at least do qtes and mm. then you put the qte into a little like uh, a bit like a jrpg oh, so you'd like yeah. have a little qte so you go like skill check skill check skill check to a point choose your choose which way you go sort of thing skill check skill check have an encounter and then you then sort of do that sort of that's how i kind of imagined it working yeah. i think a bit like shenmue used to do that game that mm. sort of, a little bit those two qtes but yeah i i can really i think that works really well and i think you can um i think the other and the other side of it as well as the is the political side you could go down which is <laughs> the the this is a war but war means there's there's envoys and there's getting things across borders there's trying to there's trying to you know rationing becomes an issue so it's like trying to mm. smuggling becomes more of a thing there's mm. lots of like really interesting yeah. you know getting things across borders and stuff like that which mm. happens in the campaign but you could be a bigger part of if you wanted to and that's an interesting way of putting it like again that's i guess that's more like rather than being at the forefront like oh you are having to fight war it's in the background but yet to get across the border so if you're trying to escape the Kryn dynasty mm. away from your house or your house or however you pronounce it again yeah. I'm very bad at pronouncing these names your how do you how do you, you know how do you get out and I think yeah. the other thing that's interesting so like I said you've got the Kryn dynasty and mm. the Dwalin empire who are sort of against each other on the left which you've got there on that map I don't yeah. know if it's up just now um, is the Men menagerie coast yes which is the main way the Dwalin empire gets trade in because it's yeah. landlocked so so you're having to deal with trade and this idea yeah. that suddenly the 
the menagerie coast oh not not can't say that when you're drunk um <laughs> no. it's all these port towns and each yeah. one of them has a marquise and and it's just again I really interesting that. it's <sighs> such a lovely idea it's such a view it's a, I, when that's the one that when they started in that i was thinking you know because second campaign it's always difficult you always think like oh am i gonna am i gonna get into this as much as the first one the minute they hit nicodranus and i start they started talking about it, i was like yeah i'm here i'm on holiday yeah. now i'm i love I'm, it yeah it was just perfect it was so it's so yeah that's where i really fell in love with that that, yeah. that place uh this setting and and yes and, and as you sort of mentioned this idea of smuggling there's in in the menagerie coast there's uh mm. the Reverly pirates as well so there's, there's this yes. idea of smuggling and stuff like that as well so yeah you could easily if you're the dm and you talk to your person like we don't want to do we don't want to focus on this huge heavy component we want to have something nice well pirates uh, yeah, Darkto. I mean, how cool is Darkto? Yes. So Darkto, if people don't know, is like a mm. is the pirate island where there's a pirate king who rules over this sort of free port. Um, Liberté, like, what's it called? Uh, uh, what was the place? Uh, the famous? It's not Liberté. Terry, I, is it? Oh, I don't know. I'm just thinking of the, the that place in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> they all go oh, yeah. to. That's well, it's all like that. But in, if you played yeah. um, Uncharted Four, they try and fight in Uncharted Four. Oh, of course they do. Yes. Um, I think it's called oh. Libertalia. 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 It. Yes, yeah, so it's go. basically in like inspired by that and the sort of like free town sort of. I'd, yeah. I'd completely forgot about about that. Uh, that, yeah. That yeah, of course, because they go back several times. Cause like we bloody love this place. We want to go. <laughs> and but it's <laughs> also dangerous. <laughs> yeah, until they got banned. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so there's like spoilers. So, well, spoilers. <laughs> but so yeah, so both books. Obviously, we will say this. Like the first part of the both books are very heavy mm. in law, and obviously there's this huge thing about um, how Exandria came to be. Uh, yeah. This idea there's a huge battle with the gods and this I, against the the world itself. And there's some yes. amazing um, imagery talking about like the 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 gods of the prime deities created their children. And mm. here were the first children were the elves and the dwarves and the humans yeah. and more races followed, but the earth rebelled, and this, they, they mm. was it the deities the elementals were, yeah yeah the pri- the primordials and this idea that they they were saddened to see their children dashed across the rocks and you're like whoa what a what a yeah. beautiful way of describing it and then this idea the schism between mm. the gods saying well we should just start anew and then this idea of the betrayer gods who went to join the primordials and it was just again it's very classic like good versus evil you know yeah. and then setting up the pantheon as well oh what's it yeah. and then this huge battle where then they again i'm gonna get this one this is the age of arcanum yes. where the the children of the worlds were like please help us you know the the betrayer gods have been released from their prisons and they're yeah. gonna come and kill us and so the prime prime deities were like okay and so they had these huge battles on Wildmount, and that's where is uh, your house yeah. is such a scarred landscape because that's where the most damage was taken. Yeah, and I just again descriptions like that, like I know, like I I've done mm. a very potted history there, but it's just mm. it, it was interesting to read. There's a lot of it, and obviously it goes into lots of detail about stuff. But mm. it's nice to ha- if you've got an idea in your head and you're like, here's a huge expanse, and you think, yeah. well, what happened here to make it like sparse or make it why is it so luscious here and stuff like that mm. so I think it, it's definitely an interesting story and it, it, it definitely influences the rest of the world so maybe starting with a, panthe- a pantheon of sorts or even just like here's a story of creation good versus evil it's a good mm. place to start easy starting point no it is and it and it and it's got that classic that age of Arcanum sort of uh, people pushing their luck too far so they've got yes. that whole the whole reason they're unlocked is because people trying to understand the secret mm. so they go and delve into darker and dungeon magic it's, it's that sort of classic that there's so many settings like that i mean the wheel of time has had the of the sort of age before the age before was the was a high age of where mm. i think it, in that setting it, in that book it was always talked about where it was not based on uh, capitalism. It was based on sort of the quality of your work and the, the sort of like uh, your your intellect and all this sort of stuff and about how well you could do magics and and create interesting things that sort of thing. And then mm. it all everyone starts to get a little bit too much a delving bit greedy. into a bit greedy yeah. with it and starts playing with magics they shouldn't. And then pff, it all blows but, up. But what's yeah? But what's interesting again? It talks about well, the prime deities were saddened by this, but realised. And understood that the children needed to do this, and you're like, mm. whoa, yeah, because you think because yeah. because that's this 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 greed and trying to do it. Like they talked about very briefly, like a, a paragraph or so about a mortal felling the god of death and taking their place in the pantheon. Yes. And I I assume, yeah. and I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong, is this the Raven Queen? 
I assume yes. that that must be who it is. Yeah. And you just think to yourself, like, that's such a big deal, this 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 person doing. And you think, so surely someone must step in because now they're they're messing with with the fabric, the weave itself. Yes. And then and then of course, then some some idiot, some bloody know it all, is like, I'm just gonna open the prisons and let the betrayer gods yeah, back. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, this will work. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, we won't we won't dwell too much more on it. But it is. Yeah. I think if a good bedtime read, mm. there's a lot of it. Oh, so yeah, just take 100%. your time with it. So. Yeah. No, it really is. And and the whole yeah, it's obviously we're written. It was really interesting. The whole um, the whole this is just some of the deity the yes. pictures they have of them. I just sort of show them. But oh, the Dawn Father, hooray! <laughs> yeah, it was so great the 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 way that um, Matt Mercer talked about it at the beginning, saying that. You know, uh, this book has forced me to sort of because he obviously had ideas about it and had this mm. probably as some scribbled notes as old D and D campaigns are, but putting it, forcing it into this, and actually giving those orders actually helps like develop even further and give much more breath to it. And it is beautifully put together. And there's some really lovely just bits of information. And there's mm. always someone. There's like I'll just show one here. So for the Dawnfather, for example, mm. it gives you the alignment, just the domains that he talks about. It gives you a lovely little bit of information and then mm. gives you a holy day which was something we talked about i liked from yes. the oh next week we talk about on the ghost walk campaign ghost walk. Whoops. Whoops. So, yeah just <laughs> spoiler for next week <laughs> spoiler for next week ghost walk. uh but um and then some little commandments of it and it's just a nice little here's a paragraph and if someone isn't going to be running this campaign but wants to be running a any campaign and it's just looking for inspiration for a deity and how to write a deity these are really mm. good it's not a lot of work it's just here's a really simple way to to just get that across and it's very well put together so you, you know what i've completely forgotten about the calendar and time because i did make a note of that oh uh, 11 you... months come on matt what are you playing at i know i was like what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> what's um, that about that's just trying to be different right i mean i know i know but i quite like what i did quite like certainly in um uh oh, oh explorers go to wild mount is that yeah, yeah they have like the holidays for each month yes and again this goes back into like oh if you d dive in deep to the lore so, so the dwarven empire they've outlawed certain gods that they don't deem as uh important or all goes oh, yeah most of them yeah. so obviously if you're those holidays are holidays <laughs> yeah. only certain approved holidays and again the, if you read into it there are definitely obviously similarities yeah. to certain countries perhaps or certain histories historical yeah. countries as that, who have mm. this ideal and i think it's interesting it's like these holidays aren't seen around but, and or certain insignia yeah. or symbols they will be frowned upon if you if you show them in yeah. the dwellen empire so stuff like that to take into consideration if you're like oh well i am a you know a, a follower of this particular pan this this particular deity it's like okay yeah. I have to remember where you know where that comes in as well and oh look at that the ruiner oh. yeah i know <sighs> they, they're actually i think some of the, the the evil ones have got better symbols but they all they, they do oh no they, the, no this is true villains dress better they, I, that's the thing isn't it <laughs> villains always dress better <laughs> they have the best ma mark uh, they have the best makeup they have the yeah, best exactly. outfits no wonder i mean maleficent <laughs> is so much cooler than maleficent um uh, Loki, um, H uh, Hela in the the Marvel films, yes. you know. Um, oh yes, the crown. The crown. You're just like, yeah, bad. I I I mean, like, yeah. I'm I'm joining her. She she know <laughs> she she knows what she's doing. <laughs> it's just it's interesting. It's it yeah. It's um yeah. They're very put together. And actually, all of the bad the betrayer gods are actually some of them you'll recognise from your classic like the Lord of Hells and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the Chained Oblivion is and I think it's similar to. Um, other, I can't remember the name off the top of my head now, uh, but the sort of uh, the <sighs> hunger, whatever it is, whatever yes. is the hunger. Oh yeah, because it's yeah, it's just it's just ongoing. Yeah, yeah I yeah. remember that from the chain of living. But the cloak yeah. and the crawling king, which does turn up in Wild Man, actually, is mm. very very interesting. Um, oh, horrible. Ugh. Yeah. No. Yeah. And and that's the and that's the other thing to mention as well. So the betrayer gods, uh, before they were sort of sealed away, along with the prime. Uh, deities after the uh, the, uh, the calamity mm. uh, behind the veil, they left certain uh, creations left behind. So Ukatoa, uh, mm. one of the lesser gods who appears in Campaign Two, is connected to this sort of thing. And there's a very interesting bit about that as well. This idea that mm. you, the big baddie could literally be a lesser god that you've just yeah. created, but it has some connection to these this pantheon and stuff. And yeah. and it, it's very easy stuff. And there's again lots of inspiration for that. But yeah, Ukatoa is your definite. 
your typical mm. Lovecraftian, oh, something's got too many eyes. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Like, Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah, that's, that's more than eight. That's no, more than that's enough. That's enough now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's the... No, that you're getting them mixed up. Ukato is the serpent, the big serpent in the deep. And then right. it's... um. Oh, it's now you've said that. It's gone right up my oh, head. Yeah. The, uh, oh, yeah. The, 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 oh, the nonagon. The nonagon. The nonagon. There you go. There you the go. nonagon. Again, you, you might need to know about that before the end of season two. But yeah, exactly. Just don't worry about a little, it. It's a little thing. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, again, and then, as you sort of said, after that, you've got, obviously, the different kinds of the uh, races. The um, races, yeah. It's very much stuff you know, I think, generally it just gives you how that fits into the campaign yeah. um that you would have i think the, the only thing i know that different really that i could i picked up clearly was the sort of dragonborn uh yes. with the two types the draconians and ravenites which is sort of brought up in the in the series very briefly and actually not very much dealt with um no and again i i Obviously, I don't want to go into too much sort of that because I know yes. obviously that particular person yes. left. Uh, exactly. So that's probably why. So let's why? Just, we all everyone knows that if they want to find that story out, they can find you can, out. Yeah, you can find it. that from because that's not our place to say. Yeah, but I will exactly. say, I do, I do hope we do have more Dragon Ball. I think my yeah. wish for season three, and I'm mm. sure we'll come into like predictions and stuff in uh, in a bit. But I do hope there's more Dragon Ball, and I hope there's more mm. dwarves actually. Yes. Because there's not there's not been a main cast dwarf for we've had obviously no. halflings we've had no there was in there. the exandria unlimited which was played by matt mercer because Matt obviously he's like i want a bloody dwarf i want a bloody dwarf in this thing but yes i think that's right and and neither um there's been there's been gnomes and there's been halflings halflings and there's humans been, half there's orcs half tieflings. Orcs, half elves. there's been no full elves no because keyleth Keyleth was a, a half, half elf. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah, and so. then and both and the, the twins were both half elves as well. So mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see if they. Oh, I've just dropped my phone. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> uh, it'd be interesting to see if they if they do yeah pick up a, a, a new race and even you know they played a, a goblin uh, in goblin season two. So maybe even another classically yeah. considered evil race mm. would be interesting to bring bring into into it. I think. Yeah. And and they had a. Uh, Oh, I'm going to say this wrong now. Wait, tieflings. Like, tieflings. tieflings. Uh, no, but I was going to say uh, oh, Ganassi. Um, Ganassi? In, they in... haven't had a Ganassi. But it was it not in Ex- Ex- Exandria Unlimited? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, they so did. I, yes. And I, I'm sure, so we should also explain what Exandria Unlimited is. So yes. obviously we've had the two campaigns and then very recently, as sort of mm. a bridge over for season three, mm. they had uh, a mini series run by a very, very capable DM called Abrea. And I can't pronounce her last name, but Abrea, who's been on everything. I yeah. honestly, she's an upcoming, up and coming DM, which I always think oh. is a horrible phrase, but she yes. has been on everything, like yeah. D- Dimension Twenty, Definitely. yeah, DN Celebration, like um, the Motherlands, uh, Into the Motherlands, I think it's called the, the Nigar. RPG. Nigar. Yeah, Nigar. there you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I highly, I, I, again, catching up with it recently, listening to it, like she is yeah. so capable, and she's just she deals with some things that are thrown at her. She's like, okay. Go on yeah. then. Like, yeah, and I, just, no, yeah. Oh. I really, I love, I really liked her style. I think, mm. um, and what I thought was really good is she kept. She's clearly got the same prowess as Matt Mercer at having a considered story, mm-hmm. but also that ability, as you said, just to go. And she laughs like after ten minutes oh. off the first episode, they're already going the wrong way. But which is great, but that's what you've got to do in D&D, but she plays it, she plays with it so well, and I, I, I have more, please, yeah, I have more Yeah, and I, I actually, yeah, if you watch that first episode as well, you mm. can tell how all, like, all of them are excited but very nervous, and you can tell how yeah. nervous she is. And I'm, it's I obviously weird, isn't it? You just don't think they would be, and you're like, it's, I, yeah. I guess, I guess it's, I, I, maybe, and we are going off topic now, I think when you're running a, a one-shot or anything for the first time in front of friends rather than the audience, you're yeah. very nervous. So, like, um, Ashley Johnson recently did her own one-shot, uh, which is all sci-fi themed. Mm. She was very nervous. I know she's, again, maybe a little bit more on the anxious side as a player, but I, I was like, oh, Ashley, you're doing really well. <laughs> I was really like, oh, no, you're doing great. I haven't seen going. that one yet. I'll I'd recommend it. It's really yeah. good. It's a mixture of... Yeah. Um, uh, Mothership and alien mechanics okay, put together. Perfect. Oh, so, I love it. Okay. Yeah, but they don't. They it. don't say that. I had to look that up because I was like, this doesn't yeah. sound like D and D. So anyway, yeah. okay, anyway, cool. by by the side. But yeah, so um, watching uh, Exandria Unlimited as well. Again, just a bit more story and having another 
GM or DM go into it and do their own interpretation of stuff has been really exciting, and I hope they do yeah, more of that. That's actually, what I'd, I mean. I'd like to see more Abrea, and I'd like to see more. Um, I'd like to see more just of that kind of mm. ha- happening because. Well, talking about the, going back to the campaign guide, there is a lot of lore here. There's a yes. lot of great things. I think um, there's, as we said, that I mean, we could skip through the factions. There's very interesting factions, mm. and I think that I'd like. But I think what it, and they <sighs> have lots of awesome. Oh, white strap. <laughs> yeah, I know white strap. I know. Yeah, it means so much, Sundry. Hey, what's oh. up? Dude? Hey, Sundry. <laughs> Again, Sundry. makes no 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 you know, sense it? to anyone who's yeah, not watched it. So apologies, everyone. But yes, hey, but, Sundry. And who's on the Council of Taldor is another another mm. in, inside joke. But I think they're all worth reading about, and that you can take them and add them to your campaign. But the thing that's yes. really great in and there's the uh, the the thing, but is. The locations in both the books have a very detailed set of locations with, you know, as it's, you can see here, let's just take this one. It gives you a population. It gives you, yes, this is a very it, small one uh, place, but it, and it gives you a little bit of information as well as an adventure to run. Every single that, one's got whoa. an adventure or two, you know. Yeah, you know, and, and so if you're just running any campaign, because there's, there's such a wealth of, in both of them, types mm-hmm. of location, uh, mixtures of um, of peoples and uh, 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 climate and and government and mm. all of those and reasons for being. There's the one that's like um, the one I was reading. I've forgotten the name of it now, which is the old mining town that's become, which got mm. turned into a casino because it had like, so the whole story yes. of it is there was a uh, veins of gold there was a gold rush it became very wealthy and then they ran out and they were like digging 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 trying to get more and until it just fell apart and then someone came along and said let's build a casino here and then now <laughs> it's this sort of whole new structure based around sort of las vegas on on the on a mountain i love that I had, I had i had i missed that one completely it reminds me also i'm sure you remember years ago that whole they had I the idea of building it. The, they were going to build the super casino in Blackpool, yes. and then it never went through. I remember, oh god, I remember that day because we were, were going like to build always... one in Bath as well. Uh, were they? Oh, yeah, they were. That. They were going to do them all over the shop. It was then their big money making scheme, wasn't it? So of course it was. It was funny because we were thought it was all going to go to Manchester, and then we're like, no, Blackpool because they need jobs. <laughs> and, then, and then it never, and then it got never happened because obviously they're like gambling's probably not good. <laughs> oh dear. But I love that. It's such a, it's a cool concept. Yeah. So yeah, and yeah. I, again in Explorers of Wide explorer's guide to wild one i will get yeah. that name right correctly mm. there's four adventures in it mm. as well and actually if you i believe i don't know if it's still free on dnd beyond the frozen mm. sick was oh, yeah. free during the pandemic so mm. if you wanted to have us you know if you want to have a taste of it and you didn't want to fork out for two different books which do have the same materials i will mm. say obviously uh explorer's guide has a bit more obviously about that particular place as does Tardori has yes. it about Tardori. but the frozen sick was free to just play during the pandemic and obviously they're like mm. hey everyone get into D&D so have a look if it I'm sure it's still free somewhere but yeah there's another three uh, available in Wildbound as well that you can check out yeah I, I found it it's Kimal it's this one here oh Kimal yeah the yeah, glitzy yeah. gilded grimy I think they did go there at one point didn't they uh in season I, one I don't remember them going there they might have done but i don't they might they, again it's again been so yeah. long since i've done it but how cool is that yeah. like oh again, and... they did go to kaimor they did go to kaimor it was very near the end and it was it was no it was near the co- in the chroma conclave bit so yeah. i don't think you really got a full weight of it but yes, mm. yes. and yeah and, and this is the thing as well with all the critical role stuff and I, there's definitely bits in the wild man stuff as mm. well there's like they didn't go to certain big parts of it which have mm. huge sections in this and you could just read through and go that's cool. I wish they'd gone there. Well, they might do a special series on it. Who knows? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I guess before we move on to the the mm. um, the backgrounds and the mm. uh, hero uh, heroic chronicle, I just yeah. want to quickly talk about what's coming up in season three. Yes. Uh, so yes. Um, it's not so. Alexandria is not these two continents, as I discovered no. today. <laughs> No, it's uh, you should and it, yeah, exactly. They do go to two others in the actual first season. As I well. completely, mi- I completely missed that. <laughs> so again, it's been so long. But there yeah. are so yeah. officially in certainly in the Wild Mount ones. There's yeah. five different places. So obviously we've got Tardori, we've got Wild Mount, mm-hmm. and then we've got Marquette, which mm-hmm. has been confirmed for season three. And mm-hmm. then they've got the other two, who I'm going to pronounce the names wrong, but Isilray. 
Assyria. 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 Yeah, that's it. I said it five times. I think it's one fine. Times, right? You know what? This is gonna this is gonna come back to haunt us when we do, uh, you know, introduce season yeah. four when it, when exactly. that happens in like five years time. Uh, yeah, exactly. And also the shattered teeth. And yes. and what's interesting about all of these places? Obviously, they all have their distinct things. So obviously, Wild mm. is this war stuff. Uh, Marquette is mostly desert. Mm. Um, which yeah. I'm very excited about because actually yeah. it, it was cool. really great when they went there. I really enjoyed. It. There was really good. Um, so to, keep, to remind people yes. and to say, so they went there to. Um, I can't remember exactly the reason they ended up there in the first place, but they definitely get involved in um, in the. Uh, oh yes, I remember. They they have to go there because um, Sam Regal's character. This is a big spoiler. Halfway through, leaves the campaign of and course. changes character. And then yes. he comes back and says, after the Briarwood stuff, and they've had their chill out time, says, you need to come to Marquette because I've uh, they've found another tesseract, uh, ziggurat or something. So they ziggurat, go with the yes. Marquette and they go on this whole adventure there. And this I is where know. the whole sued thing starts happening. There spice, want some spice is all is all there. there and go, they get yes. in, they get to meet uh, Jamona uh, Al Sud, who's the leader of Ankarel, which is the who's secret. Yep. I, I can yep. spoil more of it, but yeah, and it's but it's got fantastic. Um, it's got a fantastic uh, vibe to it. It's really great, and I think I'm so excited for more of it. Mm. And then it's Silera. They go to Vasselheim. They travel on the yes. In the first few episodes, actually, I think before even the Briarwoods arc, they go over to Vasselheim mm. with um, probably Kima. Yeah, they uh, go over Kima or, with or, the or thing they've one. gained from which they got from the mm. first round, the mind players. And that's where you have Felicia Day and um, oh Will Wheaton's character. Will of Wheaton's characters when they turn had, up. When they had, oh, that's because they split the party. Don't, yes, yes, I remember. So that uh, whole arc is there. Yeah. Ah, uh, how interesting! Again, as you can tell, it's been years since I've listened to season one. And Vasselheim is where some of the best shopping happens. That's yes. where I think where they meet. Um, I think that's where they meet the the gunpowder. Uh, Victor. The gunpowder, of course. Hello. <laughs> the, hello. What? What? Come in. <laughs> Yeah, He's again, got one uh, less finger every time they turn up. Absolutely. Again, if 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 you take anything away from this thing, type in Matt Mercer Victor. Yeah, and watch you just Critical Role. Search for Critical Role Animated. Yes, have you seen that? Yes, the best <gasps> yes. way to watch it. Just go Critical Role Animated Victor, and and then just watch all of the shopping bits because anytime Grog and Scanlan go shopping. Well, it's it's magic. It's perfect. I learned I mean, from my mistakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want a pig's uh, head? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, this doesn't. Compl- if you're you know not involved, can... <laughs> if you haven't watched this, and I'm very sorry. No, no, no. But I think you know what? I completely forgot that they have those those minor characters. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. They're just there briefly. And of course, in uh, Wild Mount, we have. Oh, now I've forgotten his name. But the the trader in that uh, Pumat Soul. Pumat who, Soul. Hello. Who, Hello, uh, who's just super lovely, and again, oh, it's hey, as if he, yeah. oh hey, and then, then they have clones of him, and then yes. the actual Pum- Pumat Prime is really yeah. grumpy, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> so, and that's the thing. I think again, these are yeah. the flavors of who these people are. Uh, all the side characters, and that's the th- again, that's that's the the skill of Matt Mercer. It's just every single one of them. You fall in love with all of them. You like you well, care about Kima, you care about um, Allura, you care about oh, um, uh, Gil. Uh, Gilmore, say, Gilmore, Gilmore, the, the actual yeah, Gilmore. trader in in Emon, Oh, jeez, yeah. that I but, mean the Rakshasa, oh, Gilmore thing. Jesus Christ! I, again, ah, this makes no sense out of concept, but I guess, <laughs> it does. I, I know. Sorry, I'm I sorry. I will say though, I'd completely forgot about Terrian Darrington. Yeah, Terrian Darrington. Yeah. Uh, who Dodie. I think Dodie. So, and this was interesting. So at this time, and maybe it was thinking it's when they were doing the first unearthed arcana coming out of Wizards of the Coast. So that's when they brought out the Artificers class, mm. and then they, the Critical Role were like, "We're going to take a little bit of that and try it and tweak mm. it for its own purposes." Again, the first time we'd ever seen like that proper homebrewed stuff mm. on a big screen. So I think that also helped out the unearthed arcana. But I will say, we talked about the one shot stuff before the Terrian Darrington adventure. Where they're all playing different characters except for Sam playing. I haven't <laughs> seen that one yet either. I've left that as as a like a treat oh. for me at one point when I really want to go on a long journey. I don't well, know. I know it's you know, too great. I, 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 no, no. I think you're right. Marisha outdoes herself in that one. I oh, think really? that's the best. Like, I get, all I'm going to say is one woman marching band. That's okay. all I'm going to say. Okay. Oh, she's so good. She's so good. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. Anyway, anyway. Right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Sorry, everyone at home. <laughs> it no. Just... Well, we, it, it just shows, I think, it's something like this. Obviously, we both mm. have listened to it and stuff like that, but mm. I'm sure other people out there have got their other streams that are like, well, you need to listen to this. And you know what? Give us those recommendations. We want to yeah. hear, like, what, yes. what other stuff is out there. You need to listen to these episodes and stuff. This arc's really good, or this character's good. I know, like, for me, I know there's, like, Dimension 20 with Bre yeah. Brendan Lee Mulligan. I've not, not got around to that, but I, I've seen mm. clips of him. And he's Glass brilliant. Cannon, I hear about. I um the 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 other one is the Brothers. Uh, the uh, Ethicy is called now, but I forgot what it's called. The, oh, um, the Adventure Zone. Yes. Adventure Zone. I've listened to like five episodes of that, but it's the quality at the beginning is quite hard to get into, and it's like mm -hmm. it's just and time. But it's like oh, time, if there's yeah. but uh, there's some really great. I mean, let's. Have you, if you've got some people that you think that are maybe not the big, because everyone knows those big names. Yeah. If you've got some, and like the high rollers. I mean, I recommend high rollers to anyone as well. I could do a whole. Uh, where's the campaign book for high rollers, oh. by the way? Do oh, I, should, I, I hope it's coming out. It, he has technically Mark Humes has been writing on stuff, but who knows? Who knows Come what on, they're Mark. up to? Come but on. I, <laughs> I will say. So, I will say. I will say. Adventure Zone is very interesting. Uh, just quickly, because I know they're super big, the um, yeah. Hellroy brothers and stuff. What's cool about that, I think, is that it's a family doing mm. it the youngest brother is, is running their version of D, &D mm. but they get their dad involved and yeah. it actually is really wholesome because obviously the dad you know i don't get this or something like that but actually it's an amazing story yeah. going through so i do i do recommend certainly the first series and then they go off and do other things and okay. that's fine as well but i yeah you do have to stick with it a little bit and think because again some right. extra npcs there the one i do want to shout out very quickly because i think it's a cool concept and it is beautifully edited together and they again i think it's as big as the adventure zone now so I, again yeah. i'm very bad at promoting small people like ourselves but dungeons and daddies right oh yeah um and the concept is four dads have to travel into the Forgotten Realms to rescue their lost sons. Mm. And all it is that this the beginning episode is that they are they're driving to a football game and a portal opens and when they wake up their sons have disappeared and obviously they all have the classes and stuff like that. And they're just four dads. There's the football dad, there's the mm. the, the, the vegan like uh, nature dad, there's the stepfather who's emotionally detached, and there's the rocker father who, who's like, hey guys, let's do some drugs. And they all work so well together. Okay. It's honestly, and I've only heard great things about it. I really it's have. It's beautifully it's on done, list. and I will say again, I appreciate it. it's always shut up, but uh, the person up playing the step, Ron, the stepfather, is played by a, a lady called Beth May, who's brilliant. Like she, I think she's like, I don't get D and D, but she she just plays this character, and then she goes, and then recently they're coming to the end of it, and she said, I actually opened a book recently, and I discovered all these things I could do. But that's again D and D is your own sort of thing. But she she got oh, into D and D because she just started really enjoying the story. And I was like, I guess I'm a that's rogue. Really great. That's I guess I could I'm, do okay. I could do sneak attack damage. I guess <laughs> like. <laughs> oh well, I mean, th but that's the thing about it. It doesn't. I mean, we talked about combat slightly off air, didn't we? And it's just mm -hmm. like D and D at the end of the day. And we've talked. And actually, it's come up in all of our chats about you know, do you have to play D and D mm -hmm. with all the things you've got? It's really just a. It's just a. It's it's the big one and therefore it captures more people but what mm. it does like and why it doesn't matter in some respects is because this is what all rpgs do it just mm. gives you a reason yeah. to be there doesn't a it that's all a it vehicle is. to have fun with other people yeah. it is like a guy is like come over and play yeah. this new board game with me it yeah. really is it is it's almost like hey i wish to spend time quality time with you can we yeah. can we organize this <laughs> like yeah exactly yeah. I mean, I've had just as much fun just playing board games and making up crap about the board game once you're playing it, you know, getting into your complete battles, like, in Scythe, I don't know, it's not the best board game in the world, but it's a fun board game. And yeah. I've got, like, really deep into, like, no, I'm attacking you now, you're, you're dead, because you're, you're dead. dead to me, you know, Stop and it. that creates Stop. just great tension, even in Absolutely. that, but once you allow yourself just to act it out, yeah. What more um, do you want? Well, I, honestly, we've talked about this off air, but at some point we'll yeah. have to do, like, a, a, a live episode where we just talk like the not the rubbish about dnd but the little niggles and stuff like that, but just in, in general like just what we enjoy about <laughs> what we enjoy about what we get out of it and probably some recommendations for the rpgs mm. as well but that's all by the by i think yeah so with that shall we get on to uh yes. creating uh, a hero then so what so yes. what's this entail because you've mentioned this and again i completely missed this because i was too busy going law 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 <laughs> so so i'm gonna open this up there's a thing called the heroic chronicle uh mm -hmm. so it's um it basically is a very it's, it works well as I must say with 
the law that they've given on the city. So if you've yeah. got your own law for cities, then you can obviously adjust this. But I'd say that what this does really well is, is brings in all that law and actually makes it into something that you can create a really unique and um, role play, you know, um, you know, kibble, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Role play kibble for your characters. Um, mm-hmm. So it's basically just replaces the backstory section um, yeah. uh, with something much more uh, deeper. So. Do, should we do some rolling? Should we make one? You, you know it is. Let me grab the dice that are just Oh, we need out to have reach. a name for our character. Should we make a name for our character? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. How can we make a name for uh, our character? Uh, well, how should about I... we... Oh, what should we do? I was, was, was going to open we... a book and find a name. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. I was going to say okay. wait to the end, but actually, if you've got a book there... I've got Frank oh. Miller's Ronin. <laughs> I'm going to go Ooh. through that and see if I can find a name. All right, go for it. Uh, I've never actually read this. I got given this as a present. And oh, oh, yeah, I hope, this, <laughs> I hope it's not too graphic. Okay, Miller there's is... Sawa. There's a Sawa Corporation. Sawa. Sawa. As in S-A-W-A. Okay, S-A. give us okay. a surname. Yeah, Sawa, yep. Yeah. Alright, let's find another another surname. Uh, Sawa McDonnell. <laughs> Sawa McDonnell. <laughs> Sawa McDonnell. There cool. you go. Perfect. Built out of the Ronin book. Fabulous, so Sawa McDonald. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that suggestion. Uh, <laughs> All right. So what what okay. do we need? Is it it's D one hundred? We need right? we need a few things. I think as Ooh, we go okay. through. But All let's right. yeah. First off, D one hundred. Why don't you roll first then? Right, why don't you off. roll one of the tens and I'll roll the other ten? Oh, okay, that? sure. Hang on, I'm just gonna foley. Bit of foley for everyone at home. I say that every time I get dice out. If anyone watches me on TV, on TV, on Twitch, I will every time I get my dice out. That's a nice bit of foley for you at home. <laughs> because <laughs> as if someone but wants I... to record this and use it for their own shows. Oh, absolutely. We, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so sorry. I'm I'm doing the tens then. Yeah, you do the tens. I'll do the hundreds then. Okay. Cool. Right. All right. Oh no, the, units. Uh, so I, I do I, the I, units. That's what yeah. I mean. Sorry. Yeah. A, don't worry. Don't worry. I think that's why I was double checking. Okay. So so cool. the tens is nine. So ninety. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. So this is so this is the homelands. Where yeah, homelands. So we're, so we're in Zorhas in eastern Wyandir. So that Ooh. is the Kryn Dynasty or the Zarith Kitril. Now I think the Kryn Dynasty, the Zarith. Quitrill is the sort of wastes, or mm-hmm. we can have the Kryn Dynasty. What should we flip a coin for that? Yeah, definitely. So that's interesting. So yes, yeah, so, like Kryn Dynasty over the Zorhas, uh, the, the sort of a drow hierarchy that comes over yes. the Bright Queen and has a very interesting history as well. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, so we'll flip uh, one, which would be Kryn Dynasty. So we're in the Kryn Dynasty. So Asawa cool. McDonald is from the Kryn Dynasty. Okay. Right, and then on to background. So what's, what have we got here then? We've got the player's handbook backgrounds, basically. I think there's a few from others, so they've got... Um, so uh, so they're, they're slightly adapted, I think. It's just like, yes. so if you, it's Explorer's Guide to Wildland, as I, as I, I was like trying yes. to work out which book it was. But yeah, so some yeah. of them are like, oh, this is what this is. Uh, right. And this one, so that's what it so is. So, do you want to give us a D twenty then for our background? Oh, of course I can. Are you ready? Come for this on. Bit of, bit of foley. Yeah. A fifteen. Fifteen. A sailor. Oh a sailor. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're a sore half sailor. I love it yes. already. Good. Yes. I'm in it. Opposite okay. side of the sea. Okay. So what's yeah. next then? All right. Well, we need a uh, social status relationship. So Ooh. this is basically your background term is your place in the world. In the strict hierarchy of the Dwendalian Empire, a family with poor social status is worth less than the soil they till, uh, while a family of great renown enjoys all the privileges of high society. So it's kind of saying that's the differences in different ones. But um, each nation views people's backgrounds according to its cultural values. Based on your character's background, think about your social status within the context of the details of your homeland presented below. Then use the social status relationships table to determine how many allies and rivals you'll roll for later on in this section. So I think it's like we've got our social s- status, which so we, is... Yeah, so we are sailor, aren't we? Sailor. And, and then, then we've got, if you are, if you're in the Kryn dynasty, you have one ally. One, yes, yeah, one, one ally. ally. Oh, excellent. One ally. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> you yep. kind of need all the friends you get in the Kryn Dynasty. That's yeah, very true. Um, so, yes, I think that, and then so yeah, in the Eastern White and it sort of, it talks a bit about each set of a set of, uh, like how the relationship status works. I think according so mm-hmm. with us, a person's background is less in the Kryn. A person's background is less important than he than the experiences they've accumulated, particularly for those who have begun walking the sacred path known as Constitution. 
nonetheless even though the most enlightened society can't help but look down upon its low assistance and sneer at its haughty elite once all beings are beloved by the Luxon, perhaps these ills of society will be purged once and for all. So the Luxon is mm. that special um, magical device they have, which is allows them to live forever, basically. Yes. Uh, which we haven't talked about, have we, on this? No, well, well, I'll, I'll, we'll quickly talk about it. So yeah, so you'll see, obviously, the big picture of, of it on the book. Yes. It's sort of this dodecahedron, which, again, plays a quite important part in... Uh, second series as well, and this idea that it's a Luxon beacon, and these sort of artifacts are found, and uh, apparently, and I didn't realise this, so more for me is that if somebody who's attuned to it dies within a hundred miles of it, mm. they are sort of reincarnated in a new body, but that soul is sort of kept there. And this whole mm. Quinn dynasty is based on this sort of thing where the soul sort of join and you you can relive your life several times and go through this constitu- mm. consecution. I'm never going to say that right. Pr- process. Consecution, yeah. But and it's so in in my head it's how you know like elves live forever but they just regain all these memories oh it's a bit like oh there's a place in uh, something in Star Trek Discovery that's just done that as well and now I can't remember oh what it's is called. there oh, I haven't I seen the latest series oh I can't I can't remember off the top of my head but there's there's somebody who who regains the memories of all their past lives and stuff oh, like that right. or people that it's have a very lived Star this Trek whole... thing isn't it it is but what's interesting about it which it sort of is mentioned later and spoilers in case that comes up um, obviously. To, at some point you might be affected by like rejecting this idea or ha- just been living so many lives that you can't tell what is what anymore and so you go mad mm. and the Bright Queen who is the leader of the Queen Dynasty has started showing signs of this so the whole council has been very protective of her because obviously she is the yeah. leader and they're in this big war against uh, King Bertrand who is of the Dwalin Empire can't show any weakness so it's a very interesting thing is that idea yeah. of like your political leader your, your, your the sort of your figurehead is falling ill, what do you do? How do you replace them? Which, again, if you look at the cer- certain uh, current climates recently in political things, if you see stuff like, um, I'm going to say like Germany, for example, there was a whole thing last year or the year mm. before, uh, I don't know if you remember, Angela Merkel, who was taken ill a few times. She, she like couldn't stop shaking and stuff. And there was always questions about, like, can she continue if she's still in office and stuff? And obviously she's now been uh, voted out or as, as someone else is taking over from her position. Yeah. But it's that sort of thing, and it's happened on Doctor Who as well. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but like Harriet Jones becomes Prime Minister, and then she's like, "Oh, do you not think she looks tired? She looks a bit unwell." And then her whole power is just crippled as a result because they're like, "Oh, she's she can't make decisions because she's not well." So it's that idea of like, yeah, you know, you you got to protect these people even though it's a part of their thing. So yeah, interesting side note. So again, yeah, fascinating. I I thought the Crimson Dynasty was really really interesting. So yeah, 100%. really cool, really cool. cool. Anyway. All right, we need uh, yes. a settlement then in the Krim dynasty. So oh, right. we need to figure out where we are. Like, what so it gives us then one of these cities they had. So do you want to roll us a D? Should we do a D100 again? Uh, yes, I'll roll the tens. And okay. Roll the I'll units. Roll the, Sorry, I've now just units. lost my D10. Oh, no, I'll pick another one. That's, oh, that's a nine again. And a zero, so 90. Rothhold. Ah, oh, which Rothold. they do go to. Mm-hmm. Can I open that? <laughs> it doesn't no. just like. I uh, thought it'd be one... really. Oh, that's the one thing about D&D Beyond is you go, oh, it's lit up. Can I click Some, on it? Sometimes no. it does, and then sometimes it doesn't. We not, could. Not this one. Let's okay. have, a quick, have a quick look. Go for it. I'm going to see if I can open it really quickly. Give me. There you go. Boom. Hey. Population 88,000. 30% humans, 15% dark elves, 15%. Yeah, so. So th- that's quite good that you've opened it as well, because mm. then the next bit is race, so you can determine mm. your character's uh, lin- uh, mm. race or lineage by consulting this section. So you can either roll the percentile ties, because obviously it's been broken up by that, or you can just choose, which I think is quite mm. nice. So again, you could just be coming up with the concept for your character, but now you've mm. got the home settlement and stuff, like looking at the stats or the population stuff, and I was like, oh, oh, so it makes sense that you would be this. But also at the same time, you don't have to mm. choose it. But I thought actually that's quite helpful. So instead of picking race first, it's like later on. So yeah. quite cool. No, it's cool. And it works because it's near the, the Blight Shore, so we can oh, sort of, of that makes sense. And you can figure out, yeah. It's that waste, works out really we, well. Yeah, so maybe it works well. It's got a dock side, so that kind of works. We're, we're a sailor in the Blight Shore, so that so kind do, of... Do we, do we want to work out uh, the race then? So do you want to roll for Yes. It? So if you if you go back to um, uh, your your tab, the rot hole tab. Oh, you, yes. you had it okay, there. Yes, here it's okay, sorry. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah we are. Okay. Right, you're, then we can you're doing a lot to... of you're, you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. I'm just there going, do this. So, <laughs> so, so what do you want to just roll for the main ones that are there? So yes, I think not so. Not the other races. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. 
Six, but, look, but if you look, so it's, it's by percentage. So obviously, yeah. if, we, if you roll... Ah. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that then. Okay, right, so, so you I'll, roll the... I'll roll the, the tens. So it's, the tens is a two. A three, 23. So we're a human. Hooray! <laughs> okay, we're a human. Sarwald McDonald is a human. So there you yeah. go. There we are. Okay, fine, cool. Right, so then we have the family. The size of your hotel yeah. is part of the size of your family. So villages in Wilmot are predominantly rural, so... So we're a city, aren't we? Yeah, we family. are a city. So our family size. Let's roll a D... Right. D100 again. D100 again. Let's see, we've got... Uh, th uh, three? A, a 9.39, so 39. we're in the s two oh, numbers of parents. Yeah. We need two D4. I'm gonna roll a D4 uh, and I'll roll, roll a D4. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, two on the side. A four plus. Whoa. So two. So so that's six, six siblings. Six siblings. So two six parents siblings. and six siblings. Jeez. Oh, that's a, that already. But that already has a really cool. Yeah. Like instantly, like here's here's the family unit you have. You're like, oh bloody hell! Uh, uh, mm. Instantly to me, I'm like, I'm the youngest or yes. I'm the oldest. Right. That that's yes. literally what you have, and then you have to put the names. I actually quite like that. So you don't. It's not like oh, thing, you, you can again. You can always fiddle with these stats as well. But I was like, here is the family unit. You've got six. You have six yeah. siblings. You have to. Yeah, like that's that's a cool thing to play with. So instantly that you have cool, like. Right? Should we roll a D six to see which number we are? Come on, that's let's really randomize oh, this. Oh, you do it. You do it. Because I've been okay, rolling lots of tens. So go for it. It's a five with the fifth child. Oh, so you, oh now we have a younger oh. we have a younger sibling that we have to take care I of. I feel it like I feel like we were the youngest and we were the special for a long time. You know, the little like the one that was yeah. really the baby, and then yeah. they had another one. Oh, that just and then really we, yeah, stab you in the heart. Really, really cute. But, <laughs> but you realise now that that youngest child is going to disappear, and you're going to have to go find it. Or ah, and know, that's why you... you've sailed the seas trying to. There you go. They okay. ran away from home. There you ran go. Away from home. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. So then, and then, so that's that's your family. Mm -hmm. Then you get to choose. You can choose the gender age of them, but you've got powerful family relationships. So, yes. so it lets you choose one. So we need another D one hundred. So no. So so it says. Uh, so your first honor is your family. So sometimes you oh, hit. Yeah. They us roll a D three, and this is a number of powerful relationships. Let's let's but let's do one. Let's just make yeah, it easier okay. for ourselves. So we'll pick yeah. one. So. All right, I'll roll the tens. Oh, it doesn't actually. It doesn't matter because it's oh. well, unless like because it is basically a tens. Well, as an eight, so if, whatever you rolled would be uh, the num. Yeah, what did so you roll? Uh, so I got a three. So thirty-eight. So it's thirty-one to forty. You uncover a secret about this family member, whether whether a tiny embarrassment or a life-changing scandal. They now seek to un unveil your darkest secret. You gain one rival. Well, that's instantly an older sibling somewhere. Yes. Yes, the older sibling is up to no good. Yeah. So the, currently we have one ally and one rival, and this rival is somewhere in the family, and this mm. ally, we can, we, I think we can come to that in a second. But already yes. you have these things yeah. picking up. I love it. It's just, this oh. is the story. This is just story just building together, isn't it? So then, oh, you get the ally relationships then. So this is the other one. So, okay. we, so this will be our helpful person. Okay, I've got an eight. Eighty-five, so... You and this person were affected by powerful magic, and now you both share a telepathic connection that functions while you were within one mile of each other. That's pretty cool. I like that. Hey, Maybe oi that's oi. the young child, the younger one. The younger the one, yeah. Sibling. Oh, I like that, yeah. All right. The older sibling yeah. was dabbling in dangerous magics. We caught them trying to enact some sort of dark ritual. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whilst doing that... We get caught up in the in the wild magic sprays going on. Suddenly, we knock heads and wake up. The older brothers disappeared, yeah. run away from home, mm -hmm. and we both can speak telepathically. Yeah. You, as the sailor, set off to find the older the older brother to take them to to, 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 to see where they've gone, bring them yeah. home, say it's okay, or find out if they're doing bad. Yes. But you have yeah. to leave the younger one behind because they're too young. And then, then later I, on, yeah. guess who's going to get kidnapped? <gasps> what? No! <laughs> yes, the younger one's going to get kidnapped by the older one. You're going to have to come back. You're going to have to save them. The family's going to be in peril. You're, you're going you're to have to recruit the other three to come with you. To be like, yes. we need to save our sibling. That's oh my your, goodness. That's, yeah, this is it. Okay. We've done it. Like, we, don't, we don't need Taldori or Wildman. We've made our... <laughs> yeah, this is it. Good. Coming oh, to you cool. as Critical Role esque <laughs> <laughs> episode campaign 4.9. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, cool. Uh, that's that one. So we need the, another rival. Right, I was just saying, 
we had we don't need another rival do we no we so can... i guess i guess because we've kind of it's because obviously oh. we've made we've made the rival from our family members so i guess oh, if you had fair. more than one rival i see then that you could it. do this one so there's another table for that which is okay cool, pretty cool. cool. And then you can give your ally and rivals some identity, so you can give them. Oh, should we make out what their older brothers turned into? A thousand percent. Although yeah, it's going to be something really like mundane, because I can see <laughs> on there you got you got bloody cultists and fanatic and stuff. Yeah. But, um, I got an eight again. Oh, okay. It's going to be either a major, a noble, or an oh, assassin. So it could come be good. On. Six. Uh, noble. Noble. Ooh, interesting. So I like you've gone that. off and become a no- pretending to be a noble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. They are um, using some sort of enchantment magic. So they've they've taken, they've like mm. killed the noble, they've put them in the basement, oh. and they're pretending and living out their life in in secret as this noble. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in the city. Oh yeah, using their connections and stuff. In absolutely. the Korean dynasty's main, in the main, in the main, oh, in uh, uh, not Nicodran, was it called? Uh, uh, oh, Nordranus, I... Nordranus. Oh, you're asking the wrong person. I can't Gordranus, remember. Gordranus. Gordranus. Which, is, which is always confusing me because there's Nicordranus and, and then Gordranus. Gordranus. <laughs> but that's yeah, true. So that, you, yeah, because yeah. you imagine this noble, obviously, it's got influential in the Kryn dynasty, but maybe he's trying to do some political stuff with like the Cerberus Assembly, yes. cause obviously with the magic, with the... Uh, the Dunamancy. Yeah, maybe he's, he's been dabbling in the Dunamancy. Oh. That's where it went wrong. And then he's now thinking, I'm going to take this... I and that idea almost like I need more of this is that the idea of the greed and stuff we were sort of talking about yeah. before this get, getting bigger and bigger and bigger until maybe man could you imagine if they turned into a lich or something at the end and you had to stop this final four oh wow we're getting really into this I love yeah. it okay uh, we're doing it we're doing but it this with, is but, it but with this so with the nobles if you gain one fateful moment so what are fateful moments then? oh what are fateful moments here we go I'm in the name vengeance seeking rich reason. We've made our fateful moment because they, in a, in a way, but come on, let's do it. Uh, well, you roll the d20 because I rolled the last d20. Okay, fine. Let's roll d d20. Let's make it a good one. Come yeah, on. Come on. A three. A three. So you got a mysterious stranger gave you a gift that saved your life whilst you were lost in the wilderness. Roll on the ally and rival identity table to determine the identity of the stranger. Then roll on the magic item table to determine the item. If you roll a consume, if you roll a consume, a consume, ah, uh, if you roll an yeah. edible item, <laughs> you yes. roll again. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So tell you what, you if get... you if you roll on the uh, rival and identity one, I'll roll on the magic okay, table. Okay, fine. I roll the d100. I'll roll two, so it's forty-seven. Yes. It's a guard. So it's a guard. And I rolled an eighteen. So that is. Uh, it's a potion of fiber, so that's a consumable. Let me roll again. Uh, let's see, 60. Uh, 60 is... Doo, 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 doo. A spell scroll. Roll again, because it's a consumable. 13. Uh, that's a potion of fiber. Move it around. You know what? I'm just going to pick one. <laughs> just pick one now. If it's not rolling for you on three... I, I'm just, I tell you what, I will pick a drift globe. So this drift idea of globe. light, so you always see where you're going. So yeah, a drift globe. Uh, if I look it up. Uh, so a guard this... found us when we were trying on our search for this, um, for this, for our, for our evil oh, brother. Evil brother. Yeah. Evil. I say brother. evil brother, younger sister. I get, we could always we could always be children. I do I do like the fact we Just, both went for yeah. older brother. <laughs> so yeah. Like evil confirmed. older brother. Confirmed. <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it could be anything that. But yeah, so we were on the lookout look out for our for our evil older brother who's kidnapped stuff, and maybe we got lost in like the 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 yeah. grey grey wild wildlands. Yes, and then, and then this guard found us, gave us like, this light, saved yeah. our life. Cause uh, yeah, because we wouldn't have been able to see in the dark because we're human. Yes, as well. So here is oh, a little yes. light thing to lead the way. So fantastic. <sighs> okay, yeah. cool. Oh, and then oh. favorite food. <laughs> Yes, so that's just the one thing I absolutely love about this is that it's like okay, so you do all the serious stuff. Here's some story stuff, but what is yeah. your favorite food? And you're like, oh, but it's so important. Very it's so important. important. Okay, that's... go on. Do you want to roll for our favorite food, which is uh, so on the eastern wine? Oh, this we need D eight. D eight. Okay. All right. I hope it's good. Uh, it's a two. It's yu yandel, grilled yu yo, a zucchini-like vegetable that grows in Roshona's sunless gardens. Spice and spice and. Actually, you know what? I am a big fan of uh, zucchini. 
so mm. so am i oh you know what sort of a sort of sidebar to this we need to do like a the cooking D D, but we've i've done it before on we've done it before oh, yeah. on the uh, dm's book club but we could always yeah. like here's us making <laughs> our version I'll make some of it, of it. Yeah. yeah we could I, be I like see. how did it go cut to Cam- hamilton's kitchen uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cut to my kitchen Fire! Uh... <laughs> yeah uh, and then you see quickly in the background uh i'm, I'm just what? ordering from Domino's. Like, yeah Hello? exactly just on the internet just <laughs> please oh here's one i made earlier <laughs> yeah oh all right that's definitely something we're gonna do at some point when we have time and possibly yes. possibly i can set up the for... camera in my kitchen yeah same 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 all right what okay. else have we got for creating mysterious secret i think yeah. is and then we've got uh, prophecy. So mysterious secret. Go on, give us a. That, you, I did last night twenty. All you right. give me a d twenty. All right, and then and you can do the prophecy stuff. Okay, so this okay. one we're going. This is it's a natural one. Years ago, my best friend came to me in the middle of the night and gave me a key that glowed with an icy blue light. I never saw that friend again. Ooh, interesting, interesting. So again, you could have that whole thing about going to the frozen norths, perhaps, and maybe a bit mm. more like you know. Maybe maybe it's a bit like um, Sting from Lord of the Rings, where it glows when only certain things are nearby. Mm. So like, and it, excuse me, I know we've not talked about it, but it's like the Hollowed Ones, which is a new sort of uh, enemy. It feels a bit bit like the White Walkers, that's where bodies mm. are reanimated, but the souls left, and then there's a little part of them still remaining, and they just go around. I, I maybe think that's their soul. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, oh. And now they're a Hollowed One. And they were just, yeah, they give us... And actually, it was more like a dream, but you kind of woke... You had They kind of dreamt, came to you in the dream, and you woke mm. up with this key, but actually, mm. they didn't... So they came to you in the night, but really, that was their soul, and you need to then find them, the and hollow, then, and yeah. then give them back their, key. their soul, so they can... Yeah, give them back the soul maybe, of the key, and... Yeah. Oh. So, like, maybe they've got caught under some sort of spell, that then mm. and in their dying moments, or the moment when their soul was ripped from their body, they came to their closest friend, which was you... And handed you, and then and it was left as a trinket, which was like a key you had nearby or something like mm. that, that just became this blue, icy blue key. I love it. Oh, and already the the, the fact, you know, this is this has taken us like a you know thirty minutes or so just chat through it, but because it's so exciting, and I just think 100%. there's something amazing sort of things you're like, oh, and you just have all these little ideas, and now we have like almost like a full character, you know, obviously, yeah. and none of it is stat related really. It is all like hey. here's the background, here's all the stuff of it, and I just. We yeah. use the, I don't know if it's okay to say, but we use the better backstories thing on our pod, on the Dragon's Duel. We've done mm. some episodes with that, and that's a card game that gives you prompts. And I mm. must admit, that's just a card game that gives you just, like, words. And sometimes you have a D10 table. But it, to be honest, anything that gives you a prompt, you realise, I think anyone has got the capability to, you just need a concept basis. You need something to yeah. work from. And once you've got, like, even if you just pick na- random words about how, I think... You can come up with some great things. This is a fantastic resource. I'm not going to mm. say that it's that this is like this has got so much more detail than, than the other one. Yeah, um, and I think yeah, you, even just like even if you only take part of it, because obviously the settlement mm. stuff, that's just like yeah. you know, obviously that is very much into the critical role world and stuff like that. But if you have your own worlds exactly. and you're building up stuff yeah. and you go okay, it uh, the continent you're on it splits up into four regions. Here they are. Mm. They're all vaguely different. Let's mm. build up, and you could just build up the settlements and stuff like that. And they go okay. I just think, yeah, it's just nice because then, yeah, here's your hometown. Here's, and it even says, actually, if you're like, oh, if you are a traveller, or if you're a nomad, or even a sailor, it's like, here, you could always roll three times. As, here's the last three places you were in. Mm. So you don't necessarily have to have an attached home. Hometown, I, just, yeah. I just think that's I really think, cool. Yeah. I think the thing with the randomness as well is that if you pick them, it, that's perfectly fine. But I do think what the randomness does is mm. that it just puts things into your brain that you wouldn't go for that's what mm. i love about it as well that you just they're just not there because we've all got cultural influences and references that we have and so mm. you can sort of and you will you do just get into your own spaces but mm. these things bring out things that you just never know and you'll always bring your own stuff into it anyway. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Okay, what were, what were we talking about before I got cut out? I think you were saying one last thing before I got cut out. So I think I can't remember. <laughs> I can't Never remember mind. so long. You, you, I'm sure just... you'll you'll edit on you anyway. Whilst I, I think I'll, yeah, leave. I think I will. I'll figure it out. And I could. I think the point was it was um, we were just talking about that that the soul. I think that was it. And this yes. gem and the, the any yeah. I think that was all I can remember. We were at last time. So we're going to have a prophecy now. Yeah. Which is so... going to influence our future. So 
that's your turn to roll. That's these my ones. turn. So this is interesting. So these are like, uh, so you obviously you like f write down three aspirations or goals that you want for your mm. character and what you want to achieve over the course of the campaign. So again, it's another sort of session zero thing, which I think more and more people mm. are starting to do now that there's more of a storytelling yeah. role into this. And so, yeah, these prophecy goals should there's like immediate goal, a long term goal, or a, a goal to conclude your mm. character up. So we're gonna do just one, I guess, aren't we? Mm. So, we roll a two. It's interesting because I first time I returned to D and D. So not mm. when I did two E, but when I came back to five E. My GM again, great GM who is a game designer generally. So mm. I don't know why that might be why and had a very realised world themselves. We had mm. a session zero and really had to go through sort of backstory stuff and make mm. the place that we were from and stuff. So mm. it's interesting that it, I always thought that was the norm until until I met the people going, oh, that's actually no. A lot of people just go for it. How and I'm like, interesting. Oh. It's just weird how difficult. I guess. Uh, th I, hang on. Let's let's do this bit. But I have I have a point. I should come back to. So I'm gonna okay, roll the d20. Sorry. Let's go. It's a seven. I will become a hero of the war between the Dwendalian Empire and the Kryn. I will be haunted by the atrocities I witness on the battlefield. Well, that's interesting. Coming from the Kryn dynasty as well. That's pretty. Funny. Well, I think that's maybe this is it then. So this is your journey. You, yeah. evil brother, you find out is a bit actually they're coming a little bit like Essex so I'm going to try and change yeah. it up a bit maybe but they're dealing with some ne I'm going to say necromantic magics so like a, a like a huge uh, like a, a broken away branch of the Cerber assembly and maybe this is the relationship to the friend whose soul was taken as well oh, seeing oh. that's going to that's going to be the twist that it's all connected oh it's all connected yeah and that's how and that's why they came to you the key unlock something specific mm. But in the midst of this, you're trying to search for this necromancer who's trying to raise some... It may be going as far as raising a deity, turning himself mm. into a lich. You get caught up in the battlefield and you end up having to take on more than... You, you realise that there's bigger stakes here. Mm. My family back uh, in... in I forget where we're from now. Rothold. Rothold are going to be torn asunder if we don't sort this out and you become hero of a battle ah uh, but 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 what about the younger sibling i think we're going to do a katniss everdeen where prim dies i think your sibling the younger sibling whilst dies you're on you're the, on the battlefield, battlefield that's when you take your eye off you f and that's what haunts you is because you've taken your eye off your initial goal which is to find this evil yeah. half brother and in that time when you're off saving the world and maybe you get a bit too in love with the idea of being a hero, mm -hmm. you get some pride involved. Absolutely. This sense of like accomplishment. This time lord then... victorious, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you realise that in that intervening time, whilst you're becoming a, a general captain or whatever, that's mm -hmm. when your family actually loses, and you've got, and then it's, oh. and then it's a quest. <gasps> that's where the key comes in, because the key will <laughs> unlock another soul, and you bring back. Oh, your, your sibling, and that's how key. your friend and your friend sacrificed himself, and they knew this was going to happen. They saw a prophecy themselves, and it all ties in, and that's the end of the story. In. Wow, we have to, yeah, you have to get to get that through the campaign, though. But I, I love that idea. That's yeah, what again, that's but that's something that again you're setting up as a DM, thinking like, well, that's the thing. It's the DM, do. isn't it? Like, I'm like, okay, that's how I'm making this character work. Like, yeah, um, I think, I think yeah. and, and you can offer it there, and then again, it's that sort of collaboration. So, oh yes, and and that not so sure. I, yeah, I think those are like perfect breadcrumbs. Mm. Look at that, that's so cool. Like, and yeah, all this stuff. And we love our tables, and we love this sort of thing. Mm. I think this this whole yeah this hero uh, heroic heroic chronicle and this prophecy stuff really interesting and really cool to do mm. uh, a, a like a backstory for your campaign. Now yeah. you were saying just now about this, yes. like, your session zero really yeah. in depth you created your own hometown and stuff like that really mm. cool i saw someone tweet recently i won't name them because those were, and they said they don't like having um their characters or themselves their players doing work they come mm. to have a good time on 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 the game mm. you know they you know they're happy to help but if you if they're asked too many questions they're like no i i don't want to do the work I find that's really interesting because as my sort of play style is that I usually ask questions. I usually say to get people in the, mm. they're getting warmed up and stuff. I go, okay, what's one thing you spot on your journey there that yeah. you go, you, you notice that's something different. It doesn't impact the story, but it's like, I notice that because my character's like this. And it's just like, it gets them to think in that character. So something like that, what you're saying, that really in-depth character building stuff. I don't know, like I, I, for me, I'm like, that's, I'm all about that. I'd love that sort of thing. Because I know that we're going on to a, 
bigger campaign and you're exploring all the stuff that you've created but if you're a new person who's just trying it out they're like oh that's a little bit much for me so i i find it really mm. interesting what do you think about that this, this idea about the player gm workload in creating stuff uh yeah i mean i've always i mean it's, so in my campaign that i ran uh at the beginning so i started we started a new campaign um at the beginning of the lockdown mm -hmm. and i had so with the same people with the gm that had the session zero so i sort of took on what they did and sort of mm -hmm. said okay like you you know I, I used the same format he had which is a good series of questions that was mm -hmm. like where are you from who are you what's you like there was some yes i can't remember them off the top of my head but i could find them but mm -hmm. i used the same thing but one of them came to me and said ah, you make it up for me like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure, sure about this. I'm not a writer. I don't know. I don't mm. know. You know. So I was like, okay, fine. So I made them. Uh, I made them a clone of a wizard that escaped, and they have no memory of it. Oh. And then suddenly the wizard's coming after them to get get them back. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. It was like, well, that came, free yeah. reign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gave me free reign. You get. You get. You're gonna have to deal with this because I'm gonna force some RP on you. Because if you're not gonna do it, then. I'm... So How interesting. it was fun and no, and actually they really went with it and, and actually having the freedom with one character was actually quite good. It was quite nice to have that sort of, to create mm. a, a BBEG that they no one was able, was aware of from their backstory. Because I love to have it all tied into the backstory of the story that mm -hmm. I'm creating. Mm -hmm. But it was nice to have one that was tied to a backstory that they, was a secret still for them in some yeah, respects. So. I like that. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, I think that I, I definitely for me, I like, I like a bit of both. But I quite like that if somebody was really struggling, you're like, all right, give me some literally yeah. anything, and I will make something for you. And obviously, we can tweak it from there. And I think because obviously, yeah. as we're very creative stuff, anyway. But yeah, anyway. So I just thought that was really interesting. And yeah, I, no, yeah, it the, is. I think, and I'm not saying you have. To, yeah, exactly. I totally agree. You don't have to do it. And if your players aren't up for it, then perfectly fine. Like it's mm -hmm. a different. It's the game is open. I don't yeah. think any of us have ever said you have to play D and D this way because I never would because there's about a billion ways to cut this cheese and it's no no but it's true. and the critical role is the only the one way term. of doing it. I think yeah. before we end, like I said, obviously we've, we've yeah. barely scratched the surface, but we, I did because you you sent me something. You were like, I'm going to do this, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll do one as well. So oh yes, let's oh, talk yes. about the gifts of divergence. So we kind of talked about a bit about this idea of um, the yes. prime deities, the betrayer gods, and stuff. And yes, this vestiges age of... of divergence. So I quickly yes. find it in the wild man campaign Please here. Do. So yeah, essentially, um, so we sort of talked about this big war and stuff, and then the mm. the the, the uh, we we the the people of Alexandria asked for the help from the deity, but when obviously that didn't go well, and they had the calamity, and the prime de deities sealed themselves away along with the Betrayagos beyond the veil they gave mm. out artifacts or they gave out articles uh, during the battles and stuff to be like yeah, here to, to my champions champions acolytes, basically their main champions yeah that's it that's it and it gives some advice on how you would create it in general now we've done mm. on dm's book club before making magic items and artifacts before mm. but obviously this is quite nice because a little twist into it like it gave some really mm. cool examples and stuff and like you know Hey, take one of the gods. Take you know, think about what you want to do, and then do the following yeah. process. So yeah. you created your own vestige of divergence. So do you wanna? And you oh, created. You just... Oh well, actually, yours comes up first. Oh, does it? Oh no! <laughs> so, oh no! <laughs> well, no, I could do. I could quickly just. Blah, 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 blah. No, you don't look. Don't, don't look. Yes, I made a vestige of divergence. Yes. So yes. I made the cloak of the Jaeger. Mm. Right, so I saw this as the hunt. Uh, it could be the Wild Mother, but it was sort of similar to the Dawnfather's. Um, I forgot the name of the the wolf that sort of protects the mm. wolf. But you, I see, it as you could you could implement this to any of the sort of druidic or ranger style mm -hmm. deities if you so wished. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this is our little like I, I I did a little bit of graphic design. Did some drawing, guys. Did some bloody draw. He sent me that picture. And I was like, well, I have to create one now. Bloody yeah, I did hell. a little drawing of a cloak. <laughs> so the idea is that uh, so I'll read my little bit of text. Yes, please. This do. legendary cloak worn by each huntress of a long lost sect that kept at bay that which lurked deep in the darkest corners of the lands holds an affinity to the wilds it once crept. So it has a, and then it has three states. So each of these have a three states. They have a dormant state, which is you just you find when you find it, mm -hmm. uh, an awakened state, which is so as you level up, but also as you gain attunement in a more philosophical way or however yeah, a familiar sort of, way or something. But yes, like you get on, you use it, it more says, and more. 
Yeah, or even you might reach at a climactic moment. You're in a in a mm. moment of peril, and somehow it, it awakens for you. Uh, but yeah, so it has these three states, and then an the exalted state is normally when you're at about level 12, 13, I think it was, and eight was the awakened. So the dormant one is the bear gains advantage on all survival and nature checks. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's a good hunter's cloak mm -hmm. very good if you're going to track things mm -hmm. so then the awakened stake a quickened flash of the cape as it moves through the air with a lightness of feathers and a sharpness of steel before i could even react i'm sort of going into single person there oh, it's very badly written <laughs> Ooh, no. this is done in an hour okay yeah uh once awakened the following advances are bestowed you gain advantage on all initiative techs this is quite po this is quite op by the way oh yeah you gain plus two to your dexterity score so that's basically plus one modifier mm -hmm. and then you also add plus 10 feet to your movement speed mm -hmm. so i see this as again it's this sort of hunter you know you're you're going to be quick off the bat and i have this the idea is that the cape starts moving a bit like dr strange as it kind of moves <gasps> a bit for you so it's sort of uh yeah so that's why it sort of moves did i even react it sort of it kind of gets me out of the way it gives you that additional dexterity mm -hmm. That's and then so in its cool. exalted state, yes. it now holds itself aloft in the air and flows on currents untold, twitching at sounds even I can't hear. I wonder now if it's I who wears the cape or if it <laughs> is but the other way round. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah, I know. So again, I had an hour. So this is yeah. where it is. Once exalted, you get this. You can no longer be surprised because it will just... It will like, click it's there. It. It points. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Plus three, which will mean you probably get yourself up into another modifier stream. And then um, dexterity, and I have this one which I sort of took from the, which we didn't talk about the campaign homebrew rules, which in Taldore, but this sort of idea of being able to resolve yourself to keep. And I used this. I tried to make a, a Jaeger class before, and I kind of had this as well, which is that once you have a quarry, you can treat a short rest as a long rest once per day for your con score minus ten days. Ooh, that's pretty right? good. Yeah. So like and so then. And so once you've completed your quest, you will then gain the number of exhaustion points equal to the times you use this feature and must rest for that number of days per exhaustion point to overcome them. So that you can resolve yourself to just take a quick cat nap for three or four, for three days, let's say, maybe, whatever your con modifier is. But at the end of it, you're going to need to sleep. <laughs> you yeah, know, you, like you, you have, you're, otherwise you are exhausted. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So it's that. Oh. So I sort of see the idea that, yeah. And I think that would be a useful thing, like the ability just to get rid of some of those so yeah. short rest to make them gain some if it's a ranger as well they're not much. yeah <laughs> definitely that's oh that's so cool and i that yeah I, I love that like again like it really ties into a story and and that idea that you were tuned to it and yeah, mm. I, again lots of flavor in this i thought that that's really really cool so i saw that and i was like yeah oh, it is okay. completely different <laughs> yeah and you're gonna go you're gonna go you went for uh, went, what was it you so went they're for, called they're the called uh, the, the Portray Artifacts. Arms of the Prey. Arms of the Portrayers, that's it. Uh, yeah, so again, again, going back to these sort of lesser gods that have been sort of left in Exandria after the Betrayer gods have sort of left. And so I was looking through and I was thinking to myself, what do I find horrible? And obviously it is spooky season. Uh, yeah. So I was like, hmm, uh, Vesh, this idea of like almost like a fae-like creature, but it's undying, so all these zombie stuff. And her little, her little section is pretty gross. This idea yeah. that she's like again, it's looking for her mate and will consume them. And she's she married to the character in season one. Is she? Well, there you go. I yeah, it, the uh, uh, he's forgotten his name. I'm he's very played by Will, who was in um, no like, way a kid child actor Will Will Wheaton. No, not I... Will. No, oh, no. Um, oh, the other guy. Yes. Oh, we're we're yes. very bad at this. I had not realised that. Anyway, the point is that he hmm. this this yeah, this idea of like zombie s type thing. So I and her symbol, Kishore. Uh, hmm? Kishore. Kishore. There you the go. Thank um, you. This idea that uh, again, this idea of uh, eyes and this claw stuff. So I came up with the ring of Vesh, and mm. looking at it, um, the betrayer properties, artifact properties. It doesn't really say too much for the uh, vestiges per se, but in betrayer properties, mm -hmm. it says it's similar to to the same mm. manner of it. Essentially, there's a dormant state, there's a, an awakened state, and there is a uh, exalted state. So in this one, it said like, okay, for the dormant state, it has one minor beneficial property and one detrimental one, which um, weirdly I don't have up right now, but I will get that up. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry, boring, boring, boring. Mm -hmm. 
whilst I open my own, well, your document. Uh, so yeah, in dormant, uh, in minor, the minor benefit is whilst attuned to this uh, artifact, you can't be charmed or frightened. Pretty cool if you're at a, a lower level. The mm. detrimental one, though, is when you're attuned to it, animals within 30 feet of you are hostile. So again, in my head, is like that that idea that they can sense something. Like, you know, when dogs bark at evil things and vampires. I was like, yes. That's what I was thinking, like, oh, something's not right, so everything against you. Uh, when it's awakened, the minor benefit is that you get a third level spell, as cho mm -hmm. the DM chooses you, and you could cast it as many times uh, as as possible. Again, on a roll one to, oh, no, it, roll it, sorry, I got this one. Roll a d6, on a one to five, you can't cast it again until the next dawn, but it's like a free spell. And of course, mm -hmm. I was like, animate dead. That makes <laughs> sense, it's a third level spell. Uh, the minor detrimental property of the Awakened One, though, is when you're attuned to this artifact, uh, your floor is like, amplified in a way that is determined by the DM. So I'm thinking this idea of like this emotionless, empathetic uh, way around dying itself. Like, mm. it's, so you might not go save your friend who's just fallen down. Uh, yeah, you like, sort of just like, just like ambivalence to death. Exactly. Sort of she's like, and or, or be willing to yeah. put yourself. You're not going to run away. Yeah. Cause, like, what's the point? Mm. What's it's the like, point? Yeah. So, but of course, it, it could be depending on the floor as well. So anything like that, so anything lacking emotion, I thought would be quite good. And then the exalted mm. one, uh, which you only get a major beneficial sort of property, you get a, a level seven spell, similar to yes. that previous one. And I was like, finger of death. <laughs> of course it, it was. Of course it was, because <laughs> it's an awful spell, but it's such yes. a cool spell. It is so. such a good thought. And there's a little picture of it there. I did yeah. a little sketch. I love of it. I in there, but. What I suggest we do mm -hmm. is we're going to tidy this up, yes, and we'll put it on the DM skills. <gasps> yeah, yeah, Why don't absolutely. We just do that, right? Yeah. We just put a little vestige, I said the two vestiges on there. We'll put it, free, pay what you want. Pay what you want, yeah. Pay what you want, but you can go on there. We'll put a little nice little cover on it. Yeah. And if you want DM skill, DM book club. Yeah, let, let, us, let us know if you ever use it. That'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, and we'd love to see if you use it. And yeah, just go find it there. And if you use the link. Yeah, there you go, www.dragonsteel.co.uk forward slash DMs Guild, all one word. That's our affiliate link, and that means if you buy anything on there, we get a little boost. But if you just go and get this, pay what you want, just do that, and it's yeah. just, it's always oh. nice. How well, about? look, I mean, amazing. Like, we've created so much content <laughs> for us, and also had a great time. Um, Yeah, I, I, was there anything else we wanted to quickly there talk about? There is one it? thing I want to talk about, <gasps> because breaking news today when of we course. recorded this, which is uh, just a week before, mm -hmm. but look at this page. Critical Role, Call of the Netherdeep, the first major adventure set in Critical Roles of, world, world of Exandria, has just been announced. Literally... <laughs> 10 minutes, like 20 minutes before we started recording this, I went to D&D &D Beyond and it comes up saying, by the way, pre-order it now. And I was like, what? So yes. How blooming oh. coincidental. But yeah, yeah. available so, March 15th. So this is so this is very interesting. So instead of like an actual campaign setting, it feels, yeah. you were saying that it was like, it's new adventures and, and creatures yeah. and things. So it's all, and, and obviously it, it's with the run up to Marquette mm. and stuff like that. So it has already been developed and stuff. So yes. very interesting. I'm very excited. I wonder if it is the same story or not, but it, at least mm. it says it definitely is going to introduce a bit more of the Waste of Zorhas, which we did see a bit of in the in the last campaign. And there is mm. some in Wildmount, but also the continent Marquette will also be introduced as well as Ankarel, which is the main um, city, Oasis mm -hmm. City there, which is where mm. Jump, 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 Ugh. I'll, oh, I've forgotten what? his name now. There's too many names available. There's too many know. names. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And there is there is actually... Sorry, I completely forgot this. So again, there's some incredible mm. minor characters in both these books. And obviously they've got a mm. really cool description of each one of them. And, you know, like, if you go into, like, yes. the Dwarven Empire, here's, like, five NPCs that are quite important. So, like, the kings mm. and stuff like that. What I will say, though, um, and I've not seen any other book do this. I know probably Homebrew does it quite a bit. Um, it gives, obviously, genders and alignments and stuff. But it, there is inclusions of non-binary and agender uh, mm. minor characters as well which is quite cool like again yeah. i and i know more recent books are saying like hey make it up or you know or they can be whatever and and i got to give them that freedom but to actually see that printed in a D, D book i don't think i've ever seen that and i was like that's really cool actually yeah. so I was, that's i did mean to point that out and i think critical role is has been very good at trying to promote m more of that sort of inclusivity into their shows and i think that's that was one thing that I think actually it did really well for D and D. I, mm -hmm. I don't, I can't say if that's the only one that was doing it. Earlier. I don't sure. know enough, but all I remember mm -hmm. from it is thinking, this is playing actually really good intricate mm -hmm. characters that are not just your tr generic, you know, binary characters. Yeah, seeing 
or seeing characters portrayed in such ways, like in obviously a positive light, and as being yeah. uh, regular everyday things. I think that yeah. is so. It's just seeing yeah. that representation, you know, and the same with diversity as well. I know Critical Role are making progress yes. to try and be more diverse because that's one of the things that yes. has been leveled against. No, there them. is there is that, and I'm not. Yeah, exactly. There is still there are still diversity issues that that need to be addressed. But I think at least in terms of. Um, Sexuality has been definitely much more broadened mm. to in that than in the other than other shows beforehand. So that's really mm. positive. I, actually, again, I'm going to give another recommendation out there. Um, mm. So again, if you're if you're thinking, oh, I want more shows that are diverse, stuff, I actually do want to promote uh, Rivals of Waterdeep, um, which is an all black um, POC uh, cast. And they, what's really cool about them, though, so they're on their eleventh season. It started like three years ago, and I must say, each of the, so every time they do a season, it's always it was like a, you know ten episodes of that. It's a different GM from one of the players. So there's rotating mm-hmm. players and stuff there. All of them are very good. Like, quite a few of them actually are on uh, Mother uh, Into the Motherlands, which is their other sort of uh, show as well. So I would highly recommend if you want to see some interesting and different DMing from uh, different GMs from each season. Rivals of Waterdeep for sure. I I need to catch up because it's it's one okay. of those ones that's really really interesting. So again, if yeah. you want if you're looking for a fix. Uh, and you think, oh, not so sure about Critical Role because it's too long in episodes. Their episodes are like two hours long and you can dip in at any point at the start of the seasons because they do a great recap as well. Okay, cool. cool. Awesome. Oh, I have to check that out. There's, a, there's so many good lists. So oh, I know. There. It's not enough time. It's not enough time. But I think for now we'll put Taldore and Wildmount to rest. Thank you so yes. much, Hamilton. This is. Thank I, you. I'm actually so excited for season three now. I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, yes. to it and I'm actually really excited to, because they're doing a new way of, of scheduling as well. They're going to do three episodes on, one episode off, like building mm. in breaks. Very good. You don't have no DM yes. burnout, etc. Yeah. Uh, all pre-recorded as well, which I also think is really good because as you and I both know, it's so much easier to do stuff when it's pre-recorded. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I think, uh, yeah, I think also just as well dm burner i think it's nice just to have that break for everyone as well yeah. sometimes just to mm-hmm. get because they are big episodes and yeah. you know if you want to keep up with it as it's going along having mm-hmm. to every week find mm-hmm. three four <laughs> maybe seven hours to to watch it to, is, dedi- um, yeah, to dedicate it i do believe they're going to have something in the week off though whether it's like a one shot mm-hmm. or whether it's just other content so so mm-hmm. that'd be really cool as well but yeah it's yeah. going to be it's going to be an exciting time and I think yes. whether you're just starting on your critical role journey, or if you're a veteran like me and Hamilton, you're like, oh god, here we go again. <laughs> it's it's good fun, and it's, it's yes, a good. Exactly. It's, it's just a nice example of seeing how D and D has impacted not only the lives of these players and this DM, but also yeah. quite, quite a lot of the community as well. Yeah. So. Hundred percent. With all that out, with all <laughs> yes, with all that out of the way, Hamilton, yes. is there anything you'd like to plug? What's happening with Dragon's Duel? What's happening with Dragon's Duel? Well, yeah. we would have finished, and we have finished now, season two. Woo-hoo! We will have done... We're going to be planning at some point a... We've got our ultimate dragon supremes from each season uh, now, and they are going to have a, a battle off in a game show at some point in October. Nice. But then we have just, we're just having some fun plans in the background that I can't quite say yes to, to what they are yet. Mm. But the only thing I can say is that the podcast of season two will finally be coming out. Yay, you finally I get have some time. Been really bad at it. And so I've recorded all my intros and outros. I've recorded all the bits for it. I just need to put it together and get it out there. And it'll be coming out on Mondays for the first part, which would be your, your body stuff, your strength. Uh, decks and con and then on thursdays with the, the mind ah, stuff so, yeah. splitting it up very clever Int, Int very Wiz clever. and charisma and then for some of them on a sunday you'll get some backstory shows like we mentioned mm-hmm. earlier and then the one shots we did from season one and season two later on, on fabulous so you've got, you're not missing out on any of that good good dragon jewel content or you just go to the youtube and watch it there because it's all there already yeah it's there as well but also you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're one of those people who's like, no, I like just listening on my on Apple yes. Podcasts on Spotify. Yes, <laughs> no, do that and please do. Listen yeah, to please it do there. that. And, and but do some that. of them you might you'll probably watch and then go well, listen to, and then a couple of them have very visual heavy because we do Pictionary rounds. Just a bit, that's the only round that you will have that you'll probably be like, well, this is not. <laughs> it's probably stu- it does sound stupid when you listen to it as well, but you might just want to just go to the YouTube just for those. There's only like three episodes that happens in, but yeah. 
Hey, hey, I think you should. I think you go to YouTube, watch it, and then go listen to it. So the numbers are good. Yeah, do that. Yes, do that. Do Do both. Forget Critical Role. Just (laughs) yes, Dragons. Just watch Dragons Duel on repeat. Uh, well, speaking of what about Spotify, you? Yeah, Fiona. speaking speaking of podcasts, um, I my name is Fiona. I run the What Am I Rolling podcast, a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it is going very very well. Um, I I have written down what's coming up, so I'm yeah. not going to be floundering around for stuff. So on the seventeenth of October, we have the ultimate RPG backstory guide, um, where basically I'm just going to go through some of the prompts. Um, uh, the person from uh, the host, sorry, of uh, one uh, one shot podcast, James Damato. Mm. He wrote two books, and I it was quite. You s- did them before, didn't you? We did, we did do them before, and I thought, why not do them on the other podcast where they might be also <laughs> as successful? Um, yeah. so, so we're going to have some of that. But then after that, on the thirty first of October, and then the fourteenth of November, we'll have the release of Vert, the uh, basically an RPG system based on the uh, the books by uh, Paul Noon. Or Jeff Noon. I don't um, know these books. I've not heard of them. I'm I've, to check them yeah, I think so. Um, so they're based on that, but using the Cipher system, which is a very straightforward system. Yes. Um, Vert is essentially, if you imagine train spotting, but with cyberpunk elements to it, and then set, oh, cool. and then set in Manchester. So it's all these really cool things put into one. Um, and it was yeah. a lot of fun. We had Rob, who's on a podcast who I don't know, but I will definitely put in the uh, the show notes for this. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but he was very, very good. He's from Manchester himself, so it was as as someone who used to live in Manchester, I felt very, very at home. So um, I do check that out. So that will be out on Halloween yeah. and then the fourteenth of November. And then finally, of course, we have an offer code for Third Space Gaming, a, your local friendly game store in Burnley. Um, mm. If you want to get 10% off your first offer, you just put in the uh, put in the offer code DMBC into checkout, and it can be on anything you want, whether it's a new RPG book, whether it's new dice, if you want to do some more rolling and make some of your own heroic chronicles, whatever mm. it is. So that's DMBC into checkout. And there cool. we go. That's, I think that's all the plugs. Oh. I think that is all the plugs. Yeah, um, that is. I, that's everything I've got to plug. <laughs> so um, we do, but come back every week to see us here at uh, on the Twitch channel. That's the other thing. If you're listening, I completely to this, you're forgot to... we do this yeah, on Twitch. <laughs> it is on Twitch. That's the other one. So I have not remember one. If you do want to watch this live, or not, li- but you want to see well, with a visual watch element, this live. yes. When we've got we've got pictures, we've got we're showing bits of the of the books that we're going through mm-hmm. and our vestiges. You can see our pretty vestiges. You can find that on twitch.tv forward slash dragons underscore jewel, mm-hmm. and we're on a Thursday at nine p.m. British time and four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. Apart from in a couple of weeks when it's all weird, but we'll just stick over that every time. Just nine nine p.m. at British yeah time. at British time, so GMT or BST, but it will be yeah. GMT from Halloween onwards. Exactly. So, there yes. you go. Yeah, and yeah. yes, and uh, well, Hamilton, what's happening next week? It is Halloween after all. It is Halloween, and so for that, we are going to be looking at the Ghost Walk campaign. It is a very esoteric. <laughs> not very well known 3e campaign guide we talk about it really more from this very interesting theory that it has of the the dead walk you mm-hmm. when you die you turn into a ghost which is not like any other ghost and they they can sort of still exist in the world but in this this incorporeal form mm-hmm. and the land of the dead is a physical location that one can access and go yeah. to so we talk all about that yeah and how very... you might put that into your DT campaign exactly no it's very fascinating and really interesting as well i'm sure we'll be doing lots more other sort of campaign settings from previous editions as well obviously yeah. well again if you've watched this yeah because we've had the future of D D one obviously the more yeah. settings being revealed and and sent out and stuff so who knows what other settings might might suddenly reappear in five editions? exactly so we mm. might have to do more deep delves into those exactly yeah okay well that yeah that is next week i'm excited for that yeah it is well until next time friends thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening and we'll see you uh soon love you love you bye Bye!